It's like if I built a basketball court, owned all the basketballs, and then I was like, guess what? We're only playing with my rules, the game of basketball that benefits me, and then I still get 27th place. Uh, all right, let's do communism. Would America be you better under communism or would America be better under capitalism, which it is under? Hey, Hannah, 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 I, don't wanna... I don't know if I'm fucking physically ready for this shit, but, you know, we're going to do it anyway. I feel like, dear Lord, I'm not physically ready. You cannot for this. Hannah, say Hannah, I don't want to argue. I don't wanna, you I, do want to argue. You wanted uh, to make your point, Hannah, so let Hannah, me make it back. Hannah, the, the, and then you're going to try to say it's too spicy for me. No, I got you. Like, let just, me respond to you. It is not capitalism coming in and enshrining enslavement and in fact capitalism is what got rid of it and started pushing back against the centuries old awful institution so to say it's capitalism dude hell had no fury like a white woman dude telling a black man like shut the fuck up about slavery let me tell you now this isn't to say that like a white person can't be knowledgeable about slavery but it it sure is wild to just be that confident to be like let me finish Woo! I think it's honestly offensive. We are approaching the 150th episode of Middle Ground, and we need your help to continue making more episodes. Join our Middle Ground Patreon community. Bro, they keep putting my name in there. And we need your help to continue making more episodes. Hassan Piker versus Ben Shapiro. Where is it? Join our Middle Ground Patreon community and help us write the future of Middle Ground. America would be a more powerful country under communism. <laughs> I think it would be a lot better for all the people who are working jobs that are not, I guess, tech, basically. So I make content, which means that I work a lot of hours and I don't get paid the same amount as a soft dev. So I think it would create more creativity in certain like creative industries, artists. Oh my lord. I think people need to, like, never say that. I I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I, I don't think you should ever bring up that you're a content creator when defending communism. I, I just, because, like, it's not necessarily that there isn't truth to what you're saying, but it's like when you are in public defending Marxist principles, when you're in public defending Marxist principles, don't say says you, man. Listen, I'm a content creator too, okay? But if I'm in a debate setting where I am talking to a broader audience, I'm always in the back of my mind thinking about how this message is being received. And the way that that message is being received is content creation is not a real job. It doesn't fucking matter. And, and, and you know, you're going you're gonna to look like someone, someone is going to look at you and go, okay, bro, yeah, content creation. Yeah, what about fucking the real jobs? You have to... A lot of people in this community... Forget one of the most important things that I always talk about, which is be normal. And you have to, when you are, when you are having a conversation with a broader community for the first time ever, you have to present yourself in a way that is receptive. Okay. That is, that is going to be more receptive. If you make a bigger pie, everyone gets a bigger slice. Yeah. I think one of the main misconceptions about communism is that it's just making everybody equally poor. When Good Marx take. and Engels wrote repeatedly that the first step under communism is increasing the productive forces. In the U.S., over 80% of our population is living paycheck to paycheck. If you provide people's basic needs, if you invest in economic growth and in jobs and in infrastructure rather than investing in endless war and massacring Muslim people in Gaza, you're going to make this country a lot stronger. You're going to make the people a lot more stable here. I grew up in, in a white ring area. Uh, I grew up in Denver, Colorado. I was born in Dallas, Texas. I'm the first American in my family. Everybody's from the Congo. If my family was able to come here, of course, they would have some capitalist connection. So I grew up very much with the idea that everything I need is under capitalism. Individualism, freedom, all these things are under capitalism. But I'm black in America. So those contradictions really just create that friction where I'm like, this doesn't align with what I was told and what I'm actually seeing or actually feeling. Mm -hmm. So why did I come to communism? When I actually read it, when I went from, from Marx to Lenin, to, to Mao, to Deng, to, to Fred Hampton, I started realizing like, oh, this is patriotism. 
This is the idea that I look at another American and think to myself, I want you to be fed. I want you to feel fulfilled in your life. I want you to feel like you actually have control within your society. Honestly, as somebody, again, who grew up in that right-wing area, that flies over everybody's heads. <laughs> Disagreeers are walking quick on this one. <laughs> can, I say, can I say something first on this one to be so uh, bold? Here's my, Here's my argument. Capitalism made you. That's the reason why you're here. It made the phones that you've actually used to say the things you want to say on TikTok. Capitalism made TikTok. Ha! Owned. Peace. And then everyone's like, fuck yeah, dude. No one has ever fucking made a better argument than this guy. Fuck that. Woo! Woo! Capitalism, baby. Psst. Spraying yourself with champagne. Let's go! We did it, boys! It's like, dude, I love that they brought Ty Lopez for this because, like, there is no perfect distillation, no more perfect distillation of a capitalist con man than this motherfucker, okay? Ooh, okay. My argument, how come every communistic com country has to build a wall or a fence to keep people in? Oh. China ain't letting people out. My grandma, I remember going, my oh, grandma. Right here. <laughs> yeah, but where did you come? But, but where did you out. come? There's not a mass immigration into Venezuela, into China, into Russia. Where do people want to go? Switzerland. Russia. Um. <laughs> Guys, people are not going to the communist Russia, dude. <laughs> yeah. Also, no one ever leaves China. Famously, China has walls to make sure that no one ever leaves China, which is why there are no Chinese in the Western world. Famously, the one thing everybody knows is that there are very little Chinese people outside of China. Famously. <laughs> yeah, the Great Wall of China. True. Maybe he means the Great Wall of China was built to keep the communists in. America, Sweden, they're all talking about we need to build a wall because people are coming. China's not going, well, we better build a wall because all those Americans are coming across. Nobody's going there. So you legally... <laughs> said nobody's going to China bro yeah okay okay first of all okay okay number one half the reason why those in the fucking global south are trying to get to first world nations is because the first world nations under unequal exchange have been able to create a thriving social democracy in certain instances or a thriving society by fucking up those other countries. So it's not exactly a great argument to make. It's not like there's, you know, uh, fair and free and ethical trade occurring in general, okay? And then people are just like, yeah, it's the socialism that really fucked us up, dude. Fuck. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get there. Does it not strike anyone as odd that in most circumstances, like the largest immigrant population in a European country is oftentimes from a country that they have colonized? Does this not come across as unique or interesting to anyone? Like most motherfuckers don't know what Suriname is. Why, oh why, do you go to the Netherlands and all of a sudden... There's a shit ton of Suriname, uh, people from Suriname there. What, what's going on? How'd that happen? A lot of Indian people living in the UK. How did that happen? It's like, you know, is it because like the, the British economy is, is uh, or the, the ideology is like fundamentally better? No. <sighs> anyway, would you go to China? Yes. I would love to cannot become Chinese. I w went to international school growing up and every single non-Asian or anyone else so the Germans colonized Turkey? Great question. As a matter of fact, the reason why there are so many Turkish people living in Germany is because Germany after World War II desperately needed labor. They needed a, a large adult male population so they could continue being uh, an industrial powerhouse, which is part of the reason why they opened up a lot of immigration opportunities from Turkey specifically so they could have cheap labor. Anne, what are you doing? You came in and th this beeping is happening now. I I don't know what to say. I, you guys can't hear the beeping when I'm not talking because the noise gate is really good, but it's just the consistent beeping happening. 
Bu nere, nerede ötüyor? Ne ötüyor? Is it working? Did it close? Fuck! Else that's like American or Canadian that's gone to China has never wanted to come back to the US. That's something that's really interesting. So I think it's like if you've never been. That's an adverse selection, I, a group of people who well, are already. Let me finish your point and yeah. then like, got you. I guess like whoever has the open mind to go visit usually doesn't want to come back. And I do live streaming. So I know a lot of live streamers who like permanently move over to the like Asia, especially China, because not just it's cheaper, it's also just higher benefits. Most people get like free health care. Um, so it's a lot easier for you to survive there. I think it's not because people don't want to go. It's also because you're taught propaganda since a young age. China's scary, China's bad, evil, red, dragon. So people don't go and don't even go see it. That's the problem. I would definitely argue that a lot of China's success is due to the introduction of free markets. But if we want to run with this idea that China is a socialist country, which is just fundamentally untrue, I could also just book. point to the fact that they're super low on the HDI. Their GDP per capita is like $12,000. The US GDP per, per capita is $70,000. Um, so like, I, I would say in terms of like economic success, we're definitely doing way better. Ty, um, in terms of how we see immigration into this country, of course, we're American. We're only going to see the American viewpoints of this. China has immigration. People do try to cross the China's border all the time. We're all humans. Everybody's doing the same thing around the world. I would say what you're seeing is a perspective issue. I would love to break it down even more and talk to you about the massive amounts of CIA missions that have gone through Latin America to destabilize those countries, but just at that point. To what you were saying, judging a country by how much the wealthiest people in their country profit in their company, we both know what GDP means. Of course. I, it's, it's a bad so faith way to a, really explain what about country. HDI? Human, Break down human, HDI. Human, develop, uh, uh, sorry, human development index. And how so is that it's mean? measured by things like health, income, it's the UN standard for like how well an economy is doing. Uh, so from that point, perfect. Healthcare, we rank 37 in the United States. Cuba okay. ranks yeah. two. Sure. Oh God! Sure. And yeah. you, and you, Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold Cuba on. ranks what? Back. Cuba ranks what? Wait, I want to. Yeah. I really want to engage. They've been this. number one and number two in the hover through those spots. According to Cuba, Cuba uses no, their according doctors. To the according to the Commonwealth Fund. According to the Commonwealth Fund. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Cuba, been... Cuba, Cuba is 83 on the HDI. They use their doctors like slaves because 90 percent of the profit goes to the state. They literally <laughs> traffic their doctors. And when the doctors W. Bush opened up a program to let Cuban doctors. Sorry, I had the fucking uh, chaos. As soon as my mom enters the fold, chaos, uh, of course. So, I had to go deal with stuff. Okay, um, I missed a big portion of this, and I really wanted to see it, so I'm going to roll it back. Sorry. I went school growing up, and every single non-Asian or anyone else that's, like, American or Canadian that's gone to China has never wanted to come back to the U.S., that's something that's really interesting. So I think it's like if you've never sure. been. That's an adverse selection, I, a group of people who well, are already. Let me finish your point and yeah. then like, got you. I guess like whoever has the open mind to go visit usually doesn't want to come back. And I do live streaming. So I know a lot of live streamers who like permanently move over to the like Asia, especially China, because not just it's cheaper, it's also just higher benefits. Most people get like free health care. Um, so it's a lot easier for you to survive there. I think it's not because people don't want to go. It's also because you're taught propaganda since a young age. China's scary, China's bad, evil, red, dragon. So people don't go and don't even go see it. That's the problem. I would definitely argue that a lot of China's success is due to the introduction of free markets. But if we want to run with this idea that China is a socialist country. Bro, he looks like such a fucking dildo. Jesus Christ. Why do all young capitalists look the same way? What the fuck's going on? Why do they look like such goddamn nerds? Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, China's success is the introduction of uh, global uh, free market principles, which is precisely the reason why every other country that has been introduced to global free market principles have never seen the level of development of China, which is weird because uh, it seems like it's not necessarily the money coming in that actually made China so successful and be able to develop evenly, but instead what they did with the money, what they did with the gains, as a matter of fact. So, um, but hey, make no mistake, I'm going to refuse to recognize any other country where free market principles have not led to the inc incredible amount of development that China has actually seen. <sighs> What's up? Why China? Why is it? Is it not that like, what are we doing? Are we not doing free market principles in other countries? Why is it that China is weird? Weird that it's like the Chinese that have been able to fucking figure it out. You're actually stupid on this topic when you know so much. What, this topic? What, what topic? It's fucking idiotic. It's idiotic to look at the situation and, and be like, yeah, it's uh, China that got a, a lot of, of 
uh, foreign money, and that's why they're good. It's like, first of all, no foreign money flew into China out of the goodness of the hearts of capitalists. There's no such thing. And secondly, every single fucking country that has had uh, similar trade relationships for some weird reason did not get the same level of development. By that logic, communism lifted the most people out of poverty in the last 30 years. Yeah, they love saying China is communist, but then forget that, like, in that situation, then, yeah, communism did lift the most people out of uh, uh, poverty, which, by the way, it did. Socialist principles in general have successfully developed countries and brought them into modernity without the collectivization efforts that featured 400 years of chattel slavery. This does not mean that there weren't genuine issues in that situation okay both in china and in the ussr there were a shitload of problems but if you analyze their material conditions pre-socialism and post whatever transitional socialist state project that they've developed regardless of whatever kind of despotic weirdo was uh, manning the ship there was a shit ton of improvement overall that is just a factually accurate take okay the reality of the situation when it comes to china is that you have to look at what happened with China and why that didn't happen anywhere else. What is the major difference? What is the major difference between Chinese development and every other fucking country? Which is just fundamentally untrue. I could also just point to the fact that they're super low on the HDI. Their GDP per capita is like $12,000. The US GDP per capita is $70,000. Um, so, like, I, I would say in terms of, like, economic success, we're definitely doing way better. Ty, um, in terms of how we see immigration. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. It's really cool. What kind of, what kind of amenities do we have? GDP per capita being, like, the greatest metric of success is fucking awesome. It's so sick. Thank God. Famously, that, that definitely shows that America has no problems with the amount of wealth that it has and what kind of amenities it has to show for it. Like, look at actual important metrics like literacy. Look at actual important metrics like life expectancy, happiness metrics, even though it's, like, much more difficult to measure happiness. The idea that, like, and this isn't just, like, America versus China, by the way. This is America versus social democracies that have higher levels of socialization, right? When you look at, when you look at the United States of America and you look at the actual, uh, and you look at these, like, legitimate metrics... Fuck China for a second. Don't even think about China. You just compare America to other social democracies in the Europe, uh, in the in the European continent, and you will see that yeah, actually we're getting our shit pushed in, despite the fact that we have an incredibly high GDP per capita and we have a shit ton of money. Into this country, of course, we're American. We're only going to see the American viewpoints of this. China has immigration. People do try to cross the China's border all the time. We're all humans. Everybody's doing the same thing around the world. I would say what you're seeing is. A perspective issue. I would love to break it down even more and talk to you about the massive amounts of CIA missions that have gone through Latin America to destabilize those countries. But just at that point, to what you were saying, judging the GDP per capita argument is so fucking stupid. It's like looking at the stock market and being like, "Oh, stock market's doing well, so the economy's great, boys." It's like, dude, come on, come on. We we are looking at all the wrong metrics in this situation. A country by how much the wealthiest people in their country profit in their company. We both know what GDP means. Of course. I, it's, it's a bad so faith way about to a, really explain what about country. HDI? Human, Break down human, HDI. Human, develop, uh, uh, sorry, human Development Index. And how so is that it's measured I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. By things like <sighs> health, income. It's the UN standard for like how well an economy is doing. Uh, so okay, great, great. Great, great, dude. Great. Oh, awesome. From that point. Com don't even fucking engage in this conversation and like compare it to China. Okay? Don't. If you don't want to fucking talk about China because you can't make an argument where that will be receptive because Americans hear China and they fucking lose their goddamn minds, use European social democracies that are still capitalist under the same fucking metrics that like China could also be considered state capitalist as well. They're still planning happening at the central uh, at a centralized level in European social democracies and in the United States of America in the form of subsidies for example and tax breaks and and the like just like there is state planning happening in China okay i wouldn't compare the two and say that like they are the same kind of centralized planning certainly but it doesn't matter just use white people most people are fucking racist use white people to your advantage in this circumstance and just be like listen dog 
I don't know too much about anything, but it does seem like a lot of these index, uh, 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 like the human development index that you're pointing to, it seems like uh, America's getting his shit pushed in overall. Perfect. Healthcare, we rank. Achievement in key dimensions of human development, a long, healthy life, being knowledgeable, and having a decent standard of living. An economy is doing. Uh, so from that point, perfect. Healthcare, we rank 37 in the United States. Cuba okay. ranks yeah. two. Sure. Oh, God. Sure. And yeah. you, and you, Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Cuba ranks what? Back. That's awesome. Oh, let's hear it. Cuba ranks what? How dare you, dude? I can't believe you're using Cuba as an example, dude. What the fuck? Cuba ranks what? Wait, I want to. Yeah. I really want to engage. They've been number one and number two in the hover through those spots. According to Cuba, Cuba uses no, their according doctors. to the Commonwealth according to the Fund. According to the Commonwealth according Fund, to and the, wait, wait, wait. Cuba, been... Cuba is eighty-three on the HDI. Uh, on the HDI and has an eighty-three. Okay, so why the fuck is its life expectancy higher than America, dog? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> On the UN metrics, uh, Cuba might be doing really well on the on the healthcare side, but let me tell you, um, on the other <laughs> on the other stuff, <laughs> like uh, knowledge of humanity or whatever the fuck those other like uh, factors that uh, that play a role in the consideration of human development according to the Human Development Index, on those factors they're not doing so well. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. All right, hold on here. Human Development Index is a summary measure of assessing long-term progress in three basic dimensions of human development, a long and healthy life, access to knowledge, and a decent standard of living. Like, what are these metrics? What are these metrics being uh, uh, calculated on? What are these metrics being calculated on? Like, what? Because this is, this is fucking, what, where is it? Hold on. Like, this, is, this could be anything. Uh, access to knowledge? What the fuck does that mean? I mean, look. The point is, when you put that in there, okay, it's most likely, uh, it, it's most likely to be like, well, there's they're doing really poorly on, uh, uh, allowing unfettered access to the internet, and therefore, obviously, they're not doing well at all on that front. You know what I mean? It's some shit like that. It's the same with like China. Emphasize what people and their capabilities should be the ultimate criteria for assessing the development of a country, not economic growth alone. In 1990, it was introduced. Literally just a West multiplier? Exactly. Life expectancy at birth, life expectancy index, expected years of schooling, mean years of schooling, education index, GNI per capita, PPP, GNI index. Actually, this is not that bad. I take it back. I thought the knowledge part was going to be like, um, I thought the knowledge part was going to mean something fucking non-tangible. I take it back. Like the, I thought this was gonna be like a like a democracy index or whatever that you see sometimes, where it's uh where it's it's like it'll be like oh, like from from the democracy index it seems to me like this country is doing poorly and then it's and then you look at it and it's like, it it obviously doesn't factor in uh whether or not a country is in, your words have been taken back no I take it back this is not that bad this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Unless there is still some shit in there in the in the calculus that doesn't make a lot of sense. But yeah, regardless, just fucking compare it to white countries. It doesn't matter. Don't debate motherfuckers on socialism, on the grounds of socialism and communism. Whenever they fucking bring that up, talk about higher degrees of socialization, creating better opportunities and higher degrees of social mobility. That's it. Also, the U.S. has gone down three places in 2015, and China has gone up by 19. Yeah, that's why I said, look, compare the United States to Switzerland, Norway, Iceland, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Australia, Denmark, Sweden, Ireland, Germany, Netherlands, Finland, Singapore, Belgium, New Zealand, Canada, Luxembourg, United Kingdom, Japan, South Korea, boom, ding, 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 at number 21, you have United States. So every single one of these countries, to a certain degree, has better social safety nets. They're obviously different. None of them are like full-blown socialist or anything. But ultimately, they do have better amenities than the United States of America. Scores all judging based on capitalist liberal values, but then socialism works? No. No, the point is, 
Work with what you have. When you know who your uh, when you know who your interlocutor is, and you know what their uh, you know what their what their framework looks like. Use more favorable. Use more favorable metrics. Also, it is weird that Israel, an apartheid state that is not a democracy, but an apartheid state, is number twenty-two on the Human Development Index. What the fuck? Even if you consider literally the Palestinian citizens of Israel who legally cannot own property around Jewish citizens of Israel, okay, by design, the fact that they're number 22 on this list is pretty fucking sus. And then you have at number 26, the United Arab Emirates. Oh my fucking Lord. Jesus Christ, dude. The HDI is the most widely used indicator of human development has changed how people view the concept. However, several aspects of the index have received criticism. Some scholars have criticized how the factors are weighed. In particular, how a, an additional year of life expectancy is valued differently between countries and the limited factors in, uh, it considers, noting the omission of factors such as levels of distributional and gender inequality. In response to the former, the UNDP it introduced the inequality-adjusted Human Development Index in its 2010 report, and in response to the latter, the Gender Development Index, which was introduced in the 1995 report. Others have criticized the perceived oversimplification of using a single number per country, which is true. But again, remember, there's a fuck ton. It doesn't, it's because it doesn't take into account freedom. Weren't you just criticizing it because you thought it had democratic markers? No, there is a tremendous amount of fucking uh, financial instability and financial inequality that is born out of not being able to fucking purchase property. What are you talking about? Democratic markers like uh, ha having a firewall internet is not the same as democratic markers that literally mean 5 million Palestinians live under dire economic circumstances. Are you fucking insane? The same goes for UAE as well. What the fuck? No. There is a major difference between... There is a fucking major difference between the, 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 the democracy index factoring in, like, jailing fucking journalists, which is bad, okay? And I think it should be a part of uh, the consideration when you're specifically looking at journalistic freedom or freedom of press or whatever, okay? But when you're looking at the human development, and you source that in there, you're doing that usually to massage numbers. I meant how these scores define freedom in a liberal sense. You write about rhetoric falling for libs, though. Anyway, it's like measuring the HDI of America during slavery. Yeah, no, actually. All I was saying is because it isolates certain statistics and ignores others. Obviously, what's happening in Israel is terrible. Yes, but it's not just simply isolating certain statistics and ignoring others. It's entirely isolating 5 million Palestinians from the equation. That's, I think, a pretty significant number of people that are living under Israeli occupation that would most likely factor into this conversation, but it doesn't. I wonder why it doesn't, okay? I'm not simply just talking about the Palestinian citizens of Israel. I said even Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, are, are definitely not in great financial circumstance. However... If you don't factor the 5 million Palestinians living under Israeli occupation to your numbers, then all of a sudden, wow, Israel looks certainly great. Yeah, Palestine is on the list, Hassan, at 106. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, inequality adjusted. Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Switzerland, Finland, Ireland, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, Slovenia, Australia, Belgium, New Zealand, Canada, Austria, Czech Republic, Japan, Luxembourg, United Kingdom, Malta, South Korea, Estonia, Hong Kong, France, Cyprus, United States, and number 25. Israel still at 29, which I think is fucking bullshit, but, you know. The HDI multiplies GDP into life expectancy. Talk about padding for the USA. Anyway, we've deviated too far away from the major point of contention here, which is that none of these metrics ultimately matter. You can't point to fucking Cuba on the Human Development Index and be like, oh, actually, Cuba is 83 on the Human Development Index, which does not factor in sanctions. And it does not factor in a global embargo. And it does not factor in a global embargo that has happened since the Cuban Revolution. Okay? While simultaneously trying to defend the United States of America, which is still not doing great on the list. It's like, 
if I built a fucking basketball court, okay, and owned all the basketballs, and then I was like, guess what? We're only playing with my rules, the game of basketball that benefits me, and then I still get 27th, 25th fucking place. 24 people own me in basketball. That would be ridiculous. These are the metrics that we've developed. These are the metrics that we're supposed to thrive in. We are the hegemonic power, and we're fucking losing. It's ridiculous. You can fucking cope all day about being like, dude, we're actually lapping Cuba dog. You don't understand, brother. And it's like, yeah, you know what else we're doing to Cuba? Fucking it, okay? We're taking our dick out and fucking Cuba in a way that the entire rest of the planet considers to be unjustifiable for the record, for the crime of having a fucking revolution against our ally that was keeping sugar plantations is like the most unimaginably cruel thing. Any other fucking country does that. You'd be like, dude, come on. Except Israel, because Israel is not a different country. Israel is an extension of America. They use their doctors like slaves because 90% of the profit goes to... The <laughs> they use their doctors like slaves. The state. They literally <laughs> traffic their doctors. When the doctors first time you they traffic their doctors. Oh, God. Okay. Bush well. opened up a program to let Cuban doctors escape because they were trafficking them and making them go do these PR campaigns in other countries to give health care. 7,000 people immediately came to the U.S. At one mm. meeting, two doctors passed notes to other doctors they were on a hospital set with and said, kidnapped. This so is, this I appreciate is propaganda. The so I appreciate the emotional example. 100%. It's not emotional. You can talk to the No Border Sovereignty Organization that works Anna, to I'll get health care. I love that, dude. It's like, it's like, yeah, dog, trust me. You can say as much QAnon shit as fucking possible, okay? You can say as much QAnon shit as fucking possible, um, ultimately, when it comes to speaking out against, like, an American foreign adversary. No matter how fucking small the American foreign adversary is, you can just say whatever you want, and most people will be like, uh-huh, I agree. They're my professionals point. You look out like the there. nicest person in this room. I would, I would well, hope you let I'm me finish my point, then, then I'll answer. But I got please, you. go. Well, I've been told that... Fear, 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 fear is happening in Cuba. They're doing this super, super, super scary thing with Cuba, which is great. I would love facts. So I'm giving you in, facts in about doctors H fleeing the country and also about how they're having how to ration basic to antibiotics in their Hannah, hospitals. Yeah, we've got them under an embargo, obviously. No. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's not for medical. Not for medical shit. It's like, yes, no, we do it. We have a full-blown embargo. Hey, medical wait, things are excluded since 1992. That's not true. Wait, wait, that's wait, been that disproven by multiple Eddie, studies. This year during been. COVID, Cuba made their own COVID vaccine because the, the um, U.S. pharmaceutical company used intellectual property laws to prevent them from making this using our vaccine recipe. So they created their own, but they couldn't get syringes into the country because of the embargo. Because how are you supposed to get? He's 100% right on this, by the way. Uh, the uh, uh, cauliflower ear is absolutely correct on this. This is a really gross way in which the American government continues an actual fucking sanctions regime on countries that it despises, on countries that it wants to own, while simultaneously presenting itself as though uh, it, it actually it, it actually allows medicine to enter. Okay, uh, it's it's bullshit. It's really fucked up get metal when you're on a they tiny island country and you're surrounded by the U.S. military. Eddie, I and you can't get any questions. trade in I want to ask you a few questions. Eddie. How, how questions. far back do you I, think the embargo <laughs> is affecting Cuba? How long back do I think yeah. the embargo like probably what, like since did, it's been put on? Oh, really? But so I think in, when we so look wait, at... No, no, no. Let me respond real quick, real quick. In 1960, the USSR became the largest trading partner with Cuba. They started paying more for Cuba's... Cuba's sugar, yeah. They, they started buying all of Cuba's and sugars tobacco, and paying right. more than the United States was paying. Fidel Castro is on record saying that the embargo had no effect on Cuba at all. So yeah, I wonder what happened to their fucking global trade partner since the 60s, dude. The only trade partner that they had. That's crazy. What the fuck? Dude, what are we, what are we fucking doing here? Goddamn motherfucker, he's like, huh, actually, it's totally fine for us to do massive fucking unimaginable inhumane sanctions because our fucking boy got owned, Batista got fucking absolutely destroyed, so then it was totally valid because they found a way to survive through it? Get the fuck out of here. So we can presume that up until 1991 when the USSR collapsed that it didn't have an effect. So to claim that the embargo is affecting... That's disgusting, dude. The United States doesn't just stop fucking access 
from itself trading with Cuba. It has the power to shut off trade with every other fucking country with the exception of the USSR at a time when like its economic prospects were shaky. It's ridiculous, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, I wonder why North Korea isn't doing so hot since like the immediate restoration period in the immediate aftermath of the fucking genocide after the Korea, or during the Korean War. I wonder why they were doing fine. Why are they not doing fine now? What happened with the fucking famines? Like, yeah, ex you destroy their fucking trade partner in your ideological conquest in the Cold War. All of a sudden, the countries that relied on the one fucking nation state that is aligned with them are fucked. It's already stupid because, like, 1991, oh, like, I can't believe you're saying that. And it's like, bro, 30 years, man. 30 fucking years have passed by. You know, you know how much changes in 30 years? Look at where China was 30 years ago. Look at where it is now. Do you think China is the same country from 32 years ago? Shut the fuck up. But even then, it's a ridiculous thing to fucking mention, to be like, oh, well, Cuba had the USSR so as a trade partner, so it's fine. Here's why this is bullshit, okay? America doesn't just stop you from, uh, stop itself from trading with Cuba. America stops every other country from trading with Cuba, okay? Every other aligned nation globally is no longer allowed to trade with Cuba in that situation. Same with Iran. Same with Russia, even though when there's a will, there's a way, especially when we're talking about gas. Obviously, in that situation, you know, a lot of the European partners will find different ways of, of getting it through secondary markets, whether it be India or even Russian-aligned countries. But ultimately, for a country like Cuba that has limited economic prospects in general and doesn't have, like, a massive industry of, of uh, natural, I mean, oil and gas that the rest of the world needs... Yeah, it's much easier to just be like, all right, fuck off. We're not dealing with Cuba no more. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, the embargo, which is also illegal. Thank you. And an act of collective punishment and uh, really gross and immoral. And having a trade partner in uh, the USSR doesn't change that reality. Cuba. It also 100% doesn't, doesn't prove what you think it proves, which is like, oh, socialism doesn't work because fucking Cuba. Socialism doesn't work because we have done everything we could to try to fuck a country for the crime of, of trying to uh, uh, implement socialism. And, I, and I think when we look at the, this is the, can I make a point? Because this is a point I've wanted yeah, to make for a long time. When, I, when we look at countries like Cuba and China, I think it's more important to judge them based on what they had before the revolution. Before Cuba sure. had a revolution, nobody had access to health care. They were working Wait. on slave plantations Wait, that Cuba were dominated by Western multinational corporations. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone in Cuba saw the top of the IRA break. Nobody could avoid it, okay? Nobody had $5 to avoid the top of the IRA break. Nobody had a, a, a Twitch Prime to avoid the IRA break. Here's the streaming IRA break now. Corporations. China before the revolution, yes, there were famines during the era of Mao. There were far more famines before Mao came to power and before China was able to industrialize and get That's to the point today point. where they're now one of the most powerful countries on earth. In the 1950s, the U.S. was already industrialized. China had to do that. They were a semi-feudal country in extreme poverty. And in just 70 plus years, they've become this economic superpower. That is through central economic planning and, yes, allowing some of the... In capitalism, plantation workers aren't slaves. Doctors who want more freedom are. <laughs> yes. You see, you don't understand. The sugar plantation was actually good. And the slavery happening was actually good. That's a great take. Those private markets in. That's um, by undercutting the U.S. on labor because they don't actually have to pay people very much. They don't have to pay them based on their values so they can make people come over there and work far cheaper, have their companies there, and then we buy their products cheaper. We are propping up China's economy, and we've been really stupid with our own policies when it comes to that. And also, we are constantly hamstringing ourselves because our government keeps regulating our economy more, getting more involved, tying its hands so that they are outpacing us, plus all the money we're spending on war. Yeah, that's why. That's why everyone is outpacing us, I say, as I look to the past 30 fucking years of neoliberalism, which unironically has brought about genuine death and destruction of, like, the American dream or whatever the fuck it was, with obvious limitations, you know, like, the only for white men for the most part, but still, like, some semblance of, some semblance of, like, a developing economy, social safety nets, or, or uh, you know, having 
a, a, a decent unionization rate. All of it fucking eviscerated, gutted. Why? Because America is too regulatory. They, they do too much regulation. That's what it is. It's just too much regula regulation, which surprisingly, uh, the worst part of the American empire's fall has happened in the time frame that we've done the most amount of deregulation. Instead of actually like letting people keep their taxes and invest in more things. So they are playing us right now. The U.S. has been really foolish, but it's not because communism works. They were starving up well, until 1929. Well, let's look at exactly what they did. They were starving at the... Gel mi musun geri? Okay. Let's look at exactly what they did when they opened up trade. They opened up special economic zones where multinational corporations could come in, but they said you're only allowed to do things as long as it's in line with the party and as long as it's in line with the government's central plans. I mean, to say that China is just capitalist, full stop, or that all their I'm successes come from capitalism is, is pretty ridiculous. I'm saying that they were starving before capitalism started getting the foot They were starving under door. feudalism. Hannah and Cam come in here with the guns. They got the fire. They know they're ready for this. You, uh. Um... <laughs> Who is we? When you say we, who is in this we? Because we did this, because we did that. Who is this, who is this so again, metaphorical we? Because though? the U.S. government is not a capitalist government, and we have to be strict about terms here, capitalism is... A Dude, that's awesome. The U.S. government is not a capitalist government, whereas the Chinese government is a communist government, which is doing communism, but not when it actually ruins the argument that I'm trying to make when you talk about Chinese development. Then it actually is doing capitalism. But when you think about like what the Chinese government was doing, then it's communism. All the bad things are communism. All the good things are capitalism, except for America, because America is currently not good. So it's not actually capitalist enough. China, on the other hand, very capitalist, and that's why it's doing a good job. She's hitting every fucking angle. It's just... Capitalism equals good. All the good things are capitalism. Communism equals bad. All the bad things, communism. That's awesome. America currently not doing so hot. Why? Communism. China doing well. Why? Capitalism. But before it was doing poorly. Why? Socialism, communism. I rest my case. <laughs> A system and an economy. The government can either uphold capitalism or they can impede it. Our government is constantly impeding it. So when the government comes in and dude, you just like, like ah, ah, just ask one of these fucking people. Like I hate. I don't want to be like one of these uh, orange pilled like European sock them globe head pro NATO Andes. But like ask them what they think European governments have done so far as far as like implementing modest regulatory mechanisms on the free market and what the benefits of such things have been just that that's it if you're talking about impeding progress what kind of fucking progress impeding progress regulations in the form of let's talk about the aca obamacare what kind of regulatory mechanisms were implemented within obamacare you might ask that's right it's still going to be private health care okay there's still a fat middleman getting fatter in the process, basically ensuring that everything is more expensive. However, what kind of regulatory mechanisms were implemented in Obamacare? Oh, that's right. You no longer can be denied insurance from a private health care provider because you have a pre-existing condition. This fucking psycho looks at that and goes, that sucks. I hate that. If you have a medical disability since birth, you need to get <laughs> you die die i'm sorry cancer baby you're gonna have to f die suck my dick cancer baby that's what she's saying because that kind of regulatory mechanism is impeding on capitalist progress fuck oh you must die because our gdp is more important fuck dude and tells you you can trade with this person you can't trade with that person that is the government which is we because we have a representative government doing that you can't trade with this person you can't trade with that person what do you mean what are you talking about is that something i as a capitalist want to see them doing? an american citizen no we i are don't american citizens, but we are american citizens and so they are supposed to be representing our interest if we're going to talk about what we're doing as a country yes she's like cuba sucks because we won't let them trade she's based actually she's saying america sucks because embargoes 
have have uh, stopped us from trading with the Cubans, so we got to stop that. Like that is a huge part of it, and I also want to go back to communism because when you talk about some of these countries that people often call democratic socialist countries, they rank higher on the economic freedom index than we do. That means Sorry. they are more capitalist yeah. in their economy. And I don't think those countries we are. are socialist. To be and clear. so I just want to make sure we're defining terms because communism is the centralized control and ownership of production, I, I'm, of I'm companies. Sorry, I, but this is maybe, my point I'm trying to make. Like feel, We have to I, talk about actual systems that are communist if we're going to debate this. To define socialism to me. It just it, it feels as very demeaning. Wait, wait, are we doing communism? communism? How do you communism? define it then? Because the I'm hearing animation. things called socialism Labor. that aren't. But the prompt is communism. I guess like in terms of communism and capitalism, both are ideal states that don't fully work by themselves. But I do think capitalism is more pessimistic versus communism more optimistic. In an ideal state, if everyone actually worked hard and they wanted to contribute to a society to make it better, I think communism would work. Yeah. Everybody cares. I think but you guys don't. are well intentioned. Well, you could, you could teach them though. Giving people government aid makes them lazy. Getting government aid makes you lazy. A great example of that is Elon Musk. The amount Rewind now, you dumb himbo. What the fuck? Why? Defining terms, because communism is the centralized control and ownership of production I, I'm, I'm, of I'm companies. Sorry, but this is my point I'm trying to make. Like, we have to I, talk about. Oh, thank God, dude. She really fucking hit that. Actual systems that are communist, if we're going to debate this. To define socialism to me, it just it, it feels as very demeaning. I'm Wait, are like, we doing communism? communism or or How do you define it then? Because I'm hearing things. By the way, Ty Lopez shut the fuck up so much throughout this, which is wild. She said Norway's more capitals than the U.S. Oh, my God. Why? Is it because Norway has more billionaires per capita than the United States of America? Is that why? Oh, my fucking Lord, dude. That part is true, by the way. Norway does have more billionaires per capita than we do. That is an American Enterprise Institute uh, study. Okay. Let's fucking nationalize our extraction industry then, bitch. Let's go. If they can do it, why can't we? Suck my dick. Suck my fucking dick, dude. Norway is smaller, I say. I am the big brain understander of economies of scale. Oh, dude, shit, man. They're smaller? Oh, okay. I guess that means, you know, smaller better, I guess. No, she said it's capitals because they rank higher on that dumb index. This government is not a capitalist government, and we have to be strict about to hold capitalism or they can impede trade with that person. That is the government, which is we, because we have a representative government doing that. Is that something I, as a capitalist, want to see them doing? An American citizen. No, I don't. American citizens, but we are American citizens, and so they are supposed to be representing our interests. If we're going to talk about what we're doing as a country, yes, like that is a huge part of it. And I also want to go back to communism, because when you talk about some of these countries that people often call democratic socialist countries, they rank higher on the economic freedom index than we do. That means Sorry. they are more capitalist yeah. in their economy. Oh, oh, she just said that that if they are, if they're rank higher uh, on that, that means that they're more capitalist than we are. Shit, dude. I can't wait for China to beat us on that so they can be more capitalist than we are. That's awesome. She literally, oh, God. I mean, and I don't think those countries we are. are socialist, to be and clear. And so I just want to make sure we're defining terms because communism is the centralized control and ownership of production I, I'm, of I'm companies. Sorry, I, but this is maybe, my point I'm trying to make. Like, feel, we have to I, talk about actual actual systems that are communist if we're going to debate this. To define socialism to me. It just it, it feels as very These people will be like, these people would be like, oh, dude, taxation is theft. And then they'd be like, uh, these European social democracies are fucking more capitals than we are, actually. And if you were to turn around and be like, okay, this isn't socialism, but like, what if we hit a fucking fat 90% top marginal taxes? They'd be like, I will kill you. I will assassinate you and your family for suggesting such a thing. How fucking dare you? You know what I mean? It's always the same shit. They'll be like, oh, God, I've heard all of these so many times. Like, for example, one thing that people love pointing to is like in Finland or Iceland or Norway, I don't know, some, some of these fucking places, they actually, um, they actually have a, a, a much lower, uh, they don't actually have a minimum wage, right? They don't actually have a minimum wage at all. And it's like, yeah, I wonder how much of the fucking industry is, has over-encompassing collective bargaining agreements across trades. Perhaps that has something to do with the fact that there is no need for a fucking minimum wage in that situation. 
You just wanted to play fast and loose with terminology. Fine. Abolish the minimum wage and then have a 100% union participation rate. Do it. Sectoral bargaining across the board, okay? Collective ownership over industry. And then no fucking minimum wage. I'm 100%. I'm happy with that, dude. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Let's do it. Are you down for that? Are you going to go toe-to-toe in a motherfucking jail cell? No, you're not. Shut the fuck up. You're just here to spit random fucking talking points that you haven't investigated more than that. At least these guys, by the way, are are not fucking... I mean, they might be racist, but they're hiding it probably uh, if they are. Because at least they're not doing the dumb shit like, oh, they're homogenous. You know what I mean? They, uh, I'm surprised. Like, Ty Lopez, I would have expected to say some dumb shit like that. But the other two seem like uh, real annoying. Uh, the other two seem like really annoying fucking American Enterprise Institute Andes. Very demeaning. Oh, wait, are we doing communism? communism? How, do How do you define it then? Because I'm hearing communism. things called socialism Labor, that aren't. But the prompt is communism. I guess, like, in terms of communism and capitalism, both are ideal states that don't fully work by themselves. But I do think capitalism is more pessimistic versus communism more optimistic. In an ideal state, if everyone actually worked hard, and they wanted to contribute to a society to make it better, I think communism would work. Yeah. Everybody cares. I think they you guys don't. are well That's intentioned. The well, they, you could, t- you could teach them, though. Giving people government aid makes them lazy. Getting government aid makes you lazy. A great example of that is Elon Musk. The amount of government aid the X Foundation gets in order to pursue inventions that what the fuck kind of, what is, Malambo is a communist? What, what do you mean giving people government aid makes them lazy? Don't work. How often did you hear about that tunnel? Elon Musk is just one example of many different CEOs, multi-corporations who get government aid to be able to do these things just because they have the net worth. Yeah, so, I agree with you on this. I hate corporate welfare. I think it's the biggest perversion of capitalism out there. It does- no, you don't. No, you don't. Shut the fuck up. That's the biggest lie, bro. That is the biggest fucking lie. I hate that. Okay, he's he's doing a decent job of of at least like controlling the narrative a little bit and being like, ah, I don't even agree with it actually. I don't have a fucking problem with subsidies, man. I don't have govern I don't have a problem with government aid. I don't have a problem with government subsidies, even on fucking corporations. As long as the government takes ownership over that and distributes it evenly back to the fucking workers. So the idea that like the idea that she is uh, the, the idea that she's going to be like, oh, I hate corporate welfare. Like, shut the fuck up. No, you don't. You're such a liar. Doesn't work. Its track record is terrible. And it actually is the government coming in and picking winners and losers. And it very rarely goes in favor of small businesses, which is what most business in the U.S. actually is owned by. But the way it makes people lazy is not necessarily because they're bad people. It's because you have uh, fiscal cliffs. You get this amount of welfare if you make under $24,000 a year. You make $25,000 a year, your benefits drop off. So it actually disincentivizes people from moving up, working harder, taking on more jobs. And it's a terrible structure. Malumbo is a TikTok spectrum guy. Benefits cliffs, the cliff effect refers to the sudden and often unexpected decrease in public benefits that can occur with a small uh, increase in earnings. Okay? So here's what is frustrating about what she is uh, trying to describe. This does not actually prove disincentivization. She's just saying that if there isn't universal benefits packages, that yes, there's always going to be cliffs where you no longer are eligible, but you are basically barely better off than the fucking eligibility metric. That doesn't mean it disincentivizes anybody. This is the dumbest fucking argument of all time, okay? The notion that welfare programs are actually uh, disincentivizing people is idiotic. Welfare programs are supposed to work against uh, the, the compensation package that your workplace offers, okay? In a normal, healthy structure, if the welfare packages are fat, then ostensibly the, the uh, lower-income jobs are supposed to reflect that reality and offer, especially if there is a tight labor market, offer really fat benefits packages and fat compensation packages in order to compete. Except we do not have that kind of opinion in this in this country because our chamber of commerce is aware that they have the government by the fucking balls and therefore can tell the government immediately to cut the benefits faucet. 
in instead of you know operating on the free market principles or the market competition principles against the government, we never even fucking expect that. The government operates at the behest of the corporations, not the citizenry. Incentivizes people from moving up, working harder, taking on more jobs. And it's a terrible structure. I completely agree with that from a perspective of it creates animosity. If there was um a system saying that you couldn't use a certain government aid program that you're already paying taxes to just because you make this amount, wouldn't you have animosity for those mm -hmm. people below you? The cliffs are, are, I think, more so specifically referencing like situations where people are taking in welfare and it compensates for their like lack of income, and then they get a promotion or something. And also, there's a, 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 I mean, I brought this up before, but like, then make it universal. Like, I hate this. I hate the idea that like there's a there is a benefits cliff that occurs. Okay, make it universal then. Make it universal. Someone in the chat brought up child care, right? In the state of California, there is a, there's a child care fiscal cliff that does legitimately cause people to think because you're absolutely worse off, okay? Universalize it and then tax it after the fact if you would like to. The idea that like, we have to means test these social safety nets is a ridiculous uh, a, a ridiculous situation that was created by neoliberals anywhere to implement austerity at every fucking turn. There is a reason for why it exists. There's a reason for why the fiscal cliffs exist. It's so that you can turn around and fucking say, look, this program sucks. We don't have to expand it. We should actually abolish it in its entirety. And they lose the welfare and they're worse off than they were before they lost the welfare and prior to the promotion. You build that state dependency. No, it's not a myth, chat. No, it's kind of a myth. Is No, fiscal cliffs is not addressing the question. <clears throat> Giving people government aid makes them lazy is the prompt. They're not addressing the prompt. None of that actually talks about productivity even though that is a capitalist metric in general, okay? In their minds, they're thinking government aid equals uh, people are lazy, as in they don't want to go to work, they don't want to be productive members of society. None of that addresses what she just What she just mentioned does not address that prompt at all. It's ridiculous. And it de-incentivizes people to like work up the corporate ladder in their companies because they're receiving aid from the government. I think also we have to say what makes people work hard, not just what makes people lazy. Because I think that's the problem you look at government welfare is it is essentially keeping people trapped. It keeps them trapped in cycles of poverty. We actually saw before the great welfare deal under LBJ was pushed through, we had a larger rate of people coming out of poverty and moving up in this country. And then when we implemented these programs, oh that God. has stagnated ever since. And we can see that that hasn't worked. Help me, sorry, just help me out here real quick. So when you say it doesn't work, uh, what didn't work? We have not seen a decrease in the rate of people who are in poverty. And part of this is based on the education system. Part of this is based on different- Because of LG LBJ. Yes, these programs that came in, the welfare. I don't know this because of it. I think it's stagnated work that was being done. For me, as somebody who works in public policy, that's what I'm interested in. What works? There are cases where I think people are incentivized to work less hard in order to keep their income under a certain level so they can collect a certain amount of you know, government money, which in that specific case, then, then yes, I guess it does incentivize laziness. But also, if you look at government programs like Medicare and Medicaid, they're some of the most highly approved of programs in, in the country. And That's when right. you make a welfare program universal, when you make it so it applies to everybody, it basically becomes politically invincible because nobody is going to argue for their grandma's health care to be taken away. And we have a problem in this country where 45,000 people are dying every single year because they don't have access to basic health insurance. And I think if we were to nip that in the bud and nationalize those giant pharmaceutical companies and make sure that, that health care is provided to everyone, we would actually... Also, as far as novel chemical compound development goes, the overwhelming majority of publicly funded research contributes to that dramatically and every other country with socialized health care systems and better... Uh, publicly like more uh, or ease of access to public institutions all the way up to college unironically perform better than the United States of America in per capita novel chemical compound development. America obviously beats the rest of the world in totality because we have a shit ton 
of people here and a shit ton of brain drain. However, when you look at those metrics, European countries still beat America on novel chemical compound development per capita, which means that they make more with less. Those are less costly initiatives for the most part, and they yield better results. So it's not even efficient. They stimulate a lot of innovation, a lot of labor, and a lot of hard work in this country because people would be less bogged down by medical bills and would be more healthy in general. So without a market, if those are, if those, the pharmaceutical industry specifically is nationalized, how does the state set prices effectively? Um, Before you get into that point, did you want to say something? What do you mean? Wait, what? What does he think? How does he think this happens in China? By cost. By how much it costs. That's it. Like, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, whatever it costs to produce it is what you pay to the developers, and, and that's how you do it. There is literally a... Oh, I think this is the video that I know you're going to point... Yeah, here. Here it is. Here's how China negotiates its drug prices after three initial offers from the farmer rep. What a government that actually seeks the best interest of its people looks like. But this is also similar to... I don't have a I don't have authorization for a lower price. Official says 4.62 per pill. I feel there are still there's still some room left. With such a big market in China, I will give you five minutes to call your CEO for a price. By the way, this isn't even this is like if I'm not mistaken, this is literally not the state nationalized uh, uh, pharmaceutical company. This is a pharmaceutical company from a European or American pharmaceutical corporation that wants to enter the Chinese market. This bargaining process occurs in every country. We did not need to use a Chinese example for this. We can use an example from every other country with the exception of the United States of America. Every single country on the fucking planet in every single developing nation, in every single developed nation, every single nation across the board this bargaining this bargaining agreement occurs before a drug enters the marketplace america is the only country where this process that you are watching doesn't have to be china okay remember imagine these guys are white and imagine they're speaking not a scary language like mandarin but instead a a, a language that you understand like american english okay well, not American English, but okay, Canada. Ameri uh, actually, oh, well, Canada has uh, negotiations as well, pharmaceutical price negotiations. So, yeah, imagine if they're speaking uh, English in the UK. UK English. Ooh, not scary. They're, they're white now. Okay, they're white, and they're speaking in English in the UK, and they're just like, oh, brav, you want this medicine to enter the fucking market, yeah? And then the other guy's like, oh, no, mate. My CEO told me I can't send this drug into the market in it is too low of a price and the guy's like you want a license you better call up your ceo mate and tell him we're not buying unless it's cheaper and then the guy's like no all right in it what about my profit incentive and then the guy goes we know you're making profit it doesn't fucking matter it's gonna sell like hotcakes yeah and then boom all of a sudden they arrive at a point they arrive at a price point that is more manageable. And that's how you keep pharmaceutical prices low in every other country with the exception of the United States of America where that process is illegal with the exception of the uh, with the VA, which uh, Obama changed on his way out. And that's slowly started to sneak into like insulin, I guess. The reality is that uh, it's illegal uh, to do pharmaceutical uh, price uh, negotiations in the United States of America for any government entity purchasing large swaths of pharmaceuticals with the exception of the VA. Uh, and, and I believe, I guess, now uh, certain drugs for uh, Medicare as well. It's a cool country. I mean, really. Thanks, Obama. Another one of those pesky little uh, regulatory setbacks that uh, ruin this country, according to this fucking dipshit. Say something? Yes, please. <laughs> there you go. 
I was gonna add, I guess like I lived in China for eight years and 10 years in the US, so I have like the divide between the two. I guess in China, generally speaking, it's really safe um, and there's a lot more equality in certain areas. In terms of like, uh, support from the government, it is easier to get healthcare, 100%, and also I think certain societies use communism well and it can be used well to create, I guess, more equality. I think capitalism ultimately creates inequality. So one thing I was gonna say, you have to be careful. There's an old saying. We yeah, oh, oh fucking hell, there's an old saying, here in my garage. We went out of the fire into the frying pan. The question is, under what system do you not get the guys at the top becoming super wealthy? This is awesome, this is great. Ty Lopez just conceded, that's it. All of a sudden, he's no longer, notice how he's no longer attacking but instead on the back foot saying, sure, capitalism has its problems too. Good, hammer in. This is your opportunity to go, no dog, you're describing capitalism. Because Stalin and Mao Zedong, these Chavez people become, Chavez, okay, Castro, this man is no angel. The question becomes, which one dampens our greed in a way that benefit the most think, people. Yeah, I don't even think it should be that. It should just be which system is more effective at distributing resources and helping people and help out. Okay, okay. I love when motherfuckers are like, guys, um, capitalism was much better than fucking feudal society. And it's like, sure, that's fine. Uh, I agree in, in the distribution of resources. Except like, you know, I mean, it's better than slavery. Wait, slavery is demonstrably better than slavery. It's better than uh, feudalism. Except, you know, that doesn't mean we should stop evolving. That's it. We did it. Guys, we did it. We, we perfected it. History has stopped. Okay? No more need. Please, please stop telling me we need to evolve out of the current structure and by pointing to all of the uh, genuine flagrant inefficiencies uh, in distribution of resources. Please stop. Don't do it. It hurts my feelings. Uh, no, history has ended. I know so. I know for a fact. And China has abolished poverty, and we have rampant Ch poverty. China hasn't abolished yes, poverty. Yes, they have, according to the world. Bank. There's 300,000 homeless but people, people in China. people, though, yeah. in ratio. Over the past 40 years, the number of people in China with incomes below $1.90 per day. The international poverty line is defined by the World Bank to track global extreme poverty has fallen by close to 800 million. Everybody loves, everybody loves fucking LARPing and acting like capitalism is the reason for why global poverty has been, extreme poverty at the global level has been eviscerated. And then they just literally say China. They post China. While simultaneously being like, but they're also communists. But also they're not communists because they're actually capitalists. That's why they abolished it. But also they're bad. They abolished uh, uh, global extreme poverty in a bad way and not in a cool way like we would if we had the opportunity, even though we haven't. Um, well, I mean, by the way, Hold on. Did he just say China has 300,000 outcomes? And China has abolished poverty, and we have rampant Ch poverty. China hasn't abolished yes, poverty. Yes, they have, according to the world. Bank. There's 300,000 homeless. Did you just say China has 300,000 homeless people? We have doubled the amount of homeless people than China. China's population is like 1 billion plus. They have 300,000 homeless people in a population that is... Like, how many people live in China now? I don't even fucking know. What is it, like 1.3 1, 1. billion? China population. 1.4 billion! Homeless but there's more people, China. though, in ratio. He said they Google. abolished poverty. They did there's Google it. The World Bank wrote people. a full article on National they have Center abolished technology and information. When China was pure communistic, 45 million people starved to death eating bark and dirt and leaves. <laughs> It can't be 300,000. China must have more homeless people than 300,000. There's no fucking shot. Yeah, this guy is wrong. It's not even 300,000. It says here that it, there's 3 million people who are homeless in China in 2015, which is, I mean, super fucking outdated at this point, I assume. But motherfucker is 2.5 million. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no, there's no way. There's no way it was 300,000, dude. <laughs> that would if china had 300,000 homeless people only 300,000 homeless people in a fucking population of 1.4 billion it literally has eviscerated homelessness like there's no homelessness functionally <laughs> that's you know as close as you're going to get to fucking 0% in in any country okay
300 K erasure. Yeah, man. That's, it's fucking insane. I mean, even 3 million is like pretty solid. It's so weird to fucking talk about homelessness while you're defending. It's, it's so, it's so weird to talk about homelessness when you're living in the United States of America. Okay. Like it's, it's a wild, wild thing to bring up. Um, what is it? What is the actual number? Cause he's wrong. <sighs> also China's homelessness, uh, for the record, as far as I know, um, the, the Chinese homelessness policies are not exactly good, okay? This is one of those things where it's like Donald Trump would absolutely, uh, Donald Trump would absolutely look at the Chinese system and go, it's wonderful, folks. Gee, very powerful. Like, you know, a lot of, a lot of people love dick riding China without uh, really factoring in how homelessness works in China. It is technically illegal to be homeless, and it's very, very shameful to be homeless in general. So you will not see homeless people in big cities in China because they get shipped out back to the villages that they are originally from uh, when, when they are found to be homeless in a, a big city. Which, you know, that's not true. What are you talking about? Like, there's shelters... And they do have less homeless, uh, they have a less homeless population density than we do by far. I don't think it's 300,000. And also, one of the major aspects of this is that they do absolutely, um, they do absolutely have a, a, a different mechanism for housing. I don't know why you subject yourself to such a position so hard when it comes to politics that you can just sit there, just make these stupid socialists seem to know what they're talking about. This is to say, a true knowledgeable socialist is what you need to have people listen to, not this, because it's cringe as fuck. I've never heard you ride China's dick so hard. No, they don't have 300,000. I think they have 3 million. They have 3 million homeless people in a population of 1.4 billion. Okay? Uh, the United States experienced a dramatic 12% increase. About 653,000 were homeless. The most is the country began using the yearly point in time survey in 2007. So yeah, we have uh, almost 700,000, 653,000 homeless people um, in a country of 300 million. If 0.2% of the population is 300K, 0.2% of 3 million is 0.2% um, of 3 million is 2% if 30 million, what? But what did that dude mean when he said they got rid of poverty? Like, how can that be? Well, it said it. It said it underneath the video. China didn't actually eviscerate global poverty. or uh, China only eviscerated the capitalist perspective on global poverty. A metric, a global extreme poverty, sorry. Uh, a metric that declares that if you make more than $1.90 a day, then yes, extreme poverty or uh, you're, if you make more than that, then you are no longer factored in on the global population of extreme poverty. $1.90 a day. And yes, China has, uh, has, has gotten 800,000 people out of that. Or not 800,000, 800 million, I think. Not 800,000, what the fuck am I talking about? Yeah, uh, 800 million, sorry. <laughs> I said 800,000. Yeah, over the past 40 years, the number of people in China with incomes below $1.90 per day, the international poverty line as defined by the World Bank to track global extreme poverty has fallen by close to 800 million. In race, bark and dirt. When China was pure communistic, 45 million people starved to death eating bark and dirt and leaves. And it's hard to know, is it doing better? All the things you like, are you sure that's from the communist side? The Mao Zedong side, I would argue or is that from the capitalist side? I would argue it's definitely uh, the yeah. free market side. Yeah. Too. I also just want to push back on one thing real fast. Are we still going to stick with the China thing? Because well, I just want there's to say so many point, great points yeah. here. We need that, a like, we need to focus, <laughs> no, you know? Yeah, dude. Famines happen under communism, directly a consequence of communism. Um, but famine related disease killing fucking 14 million people every year annually in a global capitalist structure. And that is because they didn't bootstrap hard enough. That's like, we literally have abundance, man. We have, we have defeated famine, and yet it still exists. We fundamentally 
do not have to have famine any longer for at least the time being, you know, until global warming destroys uh, agricultural production in the global south. But the idea that, like, um, famine's under communism due to communism, famine's under capitalism, actually also communism somehow. It's, just, it's crazy to hear somebody say China's safer, though, and, like, you can literally be disappeared from the streets. Like, even your celebrities, famous tennis players, the famous FBI. people, they are... Sorry. They are Sorry. <laughs> I don't think that's a good comparison. The FBI is not a good comparison. No. Chinese social liberties, civil liberties are worse off than America, uh, 100%. That part is definitely uh, not a correct comparison. He said the FBI, but it's like... Shout out Julian Assange. Yeah, shout out Julian Assange, but we are not incarcerating Julian Assange right now. We are trying to extract him here for trial. (laughs) Oh my God, that's... Okay, she's a fucking dumbass, never mind. Like, that's the one person you could actually point to. And and they did, and then she immediately said, "We're not extraditing him." The CIA openly stated that they wanted to assassinate him. What the fuck are you talking about, dumbass? Like on the record, they are doing our best. And he's been sitting to, in Belmarsh. And I've spoken out with. Him. I actually worked with his brother on the campaign to get him free. Yes. But what I'm saying is, we don't have political prisoners in the U.S. We don't. Who are they? What? Who are they? We Edward assassinate Snowden. them. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah. Who? Yeah, yeah, sure. Snowden. Yeah. Who have we assassinated? Um, Julian. <laughs> yeah, who have we assassinated? Literally every black revolutionary leader. Open up a history book. What the fuck are you saying? Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Every fucking serious whistleblower has to literally escape the country. This is an insane take. America is the worst carceral state on the planet. Is worse than China. I will stand by that. That's such a weird argument to make. America per capita has the wor- the worst number of prisoners. That's ridiculous. What the fuck? That's insane. Like I-, I know I know we love fucking talking about how free we are and shit, but like that's definitely not the case. I would agree with you, but Shanjing happened. Yeah, even with Shanjing, uh, or Sh- Shanjing Xinjiang, even with even with that, dude, we house twenty five percent of the world's incarcerated population in our country. We are 4% of the entire global population. The fuck are you talking about? Fred Fred Hampton uh, was in jail for seven years. We did that? The government did that? I'm fine with this. I detest the FBI. Isn't it contradictory that we have better civil liberties but also a worse prison system? No, because we do have amenities. Like, we don't fucking incarcerate people for saying dumb shit, okay? I mean, I myself would very likely face government scrutiny and potential incarceration in Turkey or maybe even in China if I was equally as critical of the Chinese government or if I was equally as critical of the Turkish government. I know the Turkish one for a fact, but the Chinese one, potentially, right? However, in the United States of America, yeah, people will ostracize me, right? They will uh, yell at me, consider me a social pariah, but ultimately, it still doesn't matter as long as I'm not like directly involved, as long as I'm not directly involved in, in engaging in like violent revolutionary direct action. If I don't have some kind of participation like that, ultimately, I will not be thrown in jail yet. I don't think that that'll change in my lifetime, but who knows? That part is true. That part is absolutely true. It's insane that we're saying that. Well, we have American hero Chelsea Manning. Uh, in the chat. <laughs> yeah. By the way, America doesn't persecute political prisoners is pretty funny. I know while we're watching this and Chelsea's in the chat saying between 2010 and 2017, I was in a Chuck E. Cheese. But yes, we absolutely do have. Um, we absolutely do have a, a uh, I guess, due to our hegemonic status, we are oftentimes much more comfortable with dissent than other nations are for sure. And we benefit from that. Now, of course, as uh, economic circumstances shift and America's power uh, is, is, you know, diminishes in the global scale, things might change. But for the time being, we do have at least some semblance of like, social libertarianism at least when it comes to speech okay now obviously i can't speak for what might have what might occur if there was uh i don't know a second mccarthyist 
a second McCarthy is purge and maybe subsequent jailing if America felt like its influence was waning around the global scale and thought that like people that were advocating for uh, people that were advocating for for socialism were considered enemies of the state and defenders of um, enemies of the state and and defenders of of uh, China or whatever the fuck and then they started jailing people willy nilly that could happen. But for the time being, we we don't have that luckily. However, this does not mean that people don't. Um, this does not mean that people don't go to jail for political crimes. Like there are political prisoners. Yes. They held Chelsea Manning in Saltair for a year. The FBI is assassinating people on U.S. soil. Ruby Ridge and Waco happened. The NSA spies on basically everybody. Chicago Police Department ran black sites until the mid-2010s. The idea that we aren't having our civil liberties stepped on is not. It's not saying you're doing this more so reactive to conservatives in the video. No, I mean, we... That does happen, but not to the same degree and severity as it does in other countries is what I'm simply stating. Waco was not that. Come on, that was a fuck-up. Okay, dog. I mean, Waco is a, a, a police state... It doesn't matter. Ruby Ridge being white supremacists or Waco being fucking uh, psychopaths does not change the reality that, like, you can't fucking... You can't have the government go in and execute them like that. What do you mean? Including, like, children. What the fuck are you talking about? They gassed kids, brother. That's, like, completely unacceptable. The only place where you can get away with that is, is Israel. <laughs> like, only Israel gets to kill children like that that it is uh, currently responsible for during its occupation. America also did the move bombing too. But again, so other democracies allow criticism of the current regime without having global dominance. Declining U.S. power doesn't necessarily lead to a loss of tolerance. Other democracies allow criticism of the current regime. What are you talking about? What country that is not in the imperial core is like super open about Criticism of the current regime. In most countries, they will jail you. They will prosecute you. In a lot of countries, they will jail you and prosecute you. Especially because, like, there is some validity to their anger. Motherfucker, I said, what part of the... What country not a part of the Imperial Corps? This guy said France. <laughs> that was third world this French contingency reporting in. Sir... We have, <laughs> we have fully implemented the Maoist rebellion. The peasants have risen up. France is now a dictatorship of the proletariat, completely outside of the American uh, sphere of influence. Okay, all jokes aside. Um, Wago had the ATF literally solving the crazy guy molesting children problem by killing the children. Yeah, exactly. But then you end the problem. He can no longer molest the children if the children are dead, right? I think our incarcerations were not like due to direct political dissent. That's also not true either. We do have incarcerations due to direct political dissent, but our incarcerations for due to uh, our incarcerations due to direct political dissent is marginal in comparison to the much more streamlined, uh, I would say, machine that is the American carceral state that basically churns out the exact same structure of slavery that we benefited from for a very long fucking time. That's my point. We have a much grave, we have a much larger problem with the way that we have, uh, with the way that we have created or, or reinforced that same racial structure that America was built on through the 13th Amendment, which was supposed to abolish slavery, but only institutionalized it and relegated it to the carceral structure. That's what I'm saying. You cannot say America is the freest fucking uh, nation on the planet while... Uh, you know, you cannot say America is the freest nation on the planet when we have the most incarcerated per capita population. Yeah, I, I detest most policing agencies. I've done a ton of work on criminal justice reform. That's fine. Right if I was the capitalist, the I would court. love the FBI. No. I would love the no, FBI. Not. Literally, literally, <laughs> no. literally the vanguard of capitalism, mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. How, uh, how's that? It's one of the armed bodies of the state that protects the, the dictatorship of capital because ultimately, I mean, 90% plus of elections are decided by the candidate who raises the most money. Capital, the FBI is an armed body of the though. state. You recognize just, that, right? Capitalists would just yeah, against yeah. that. Like, well, you can say it's not <laughs> real say, capitalism, but no, capitalism has not, a tendency to it's accumulate. It's not capital at all. Capitalism is an economic system, you, you can, you can not say a government. Right, an economic system that concentrates wealth and power at the top that incentivizes capitalists to accumulate capital, That's monopolize not. the markets, and this is simply... 
this stage of capitalism that we exist in. When Iran tried to send oil tankers to Venezuela, the U.S. intercepted them with our military, took them back to Texas, and then gave that oil to U.S. corporations. How is that free trade? But How is damn, that? Damn, dude. He's like, dude. Come on, go ahead, answer that. The free Let's market one and embargo out. are against. Yeah, again, I don't have to defend against. the U.S. government to defend. Capitalism. I would actually argue the U.S. government you is a huge to. enemy of no, capitalism. Don't. We don't, and I want to define. <laughs> God damn. Yo, what? Who's doing capitalism right then, bro? I guess like, like where is the capitalism then? Find my view economy. real fast because I think I guess true capitalism exists in Norway, according to her. But God forbid we fucking nationalize our extraction industry. You know what I mean? Because then it won't happen. Argentina. Okay, it matters. This is more my like political view versus just my economic views. But I would say the only reason you need a government at all are for three things under capitalism, and that is to uphold contracts, you need a court system. Oh, she's like a minarchist, oh my God. Yeah, the only reason why you need capitalism is so you can have $5 to avoid the top of the hour ad breaks, got it. Oh my God. Did they intentionally get the dumbest people to defend capitalism for this episode? Yeah, this is like slanted. I mean, Eddie's fucking carrying, okay? Cauliflower ear, uh, definitely carrying big time. Good shit. I mean, they're all performing decently well. I do think that the 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 uh, capitalist side is is looking a little shitty. I'm gonna be honest. You do have to have a policing system so that people cannot harm other people's property or their person, and you need a national defense system. Now, what the U.S. has has gone so far. That's awesome. Okay, go ahead. Answer the <laughs> riddle me the road problem, minarchist. <laughs> Just I love talking to libertarians. An anarcho capitalist because you unironically end up unwinding society only to slowly but surely implement the same exact provisions that have occurred already. Because you can't just stop at like police and enforcement of contracts. You can't. Like society is not built on uh, pure uh, self interest by the few. You know what I mean? In that in that structure. In that structure, you you ultimately arrive at like so much of the collective effort that uh, mankind has put forward that we just kind of take for granted. Beyond that, we should have a defense. It should only be a government entity. You shouldn't have private companies coming in and profiting off of it. What is a minarchist? It's just a different. It, it's it's a libertarian uh, or a person who believes in like minimal government. What she just described: the court systems to enforce contracts. And, uh, and a police force, basically. Which some won't even say that a police force is a necessity, really. And it should be on guard to protect us if there's an existential threat. Not waging war against other countries, not getting involved in all this interventionism we've been doing since Vietnam. Completely opposed to that. But to sit here and say that that's capitalism, that's the government actually attacking capitalism. That's coming in and perverting our economic system, using our own tax dollars against us to do it. What the fuck? Yo, this shit is crazy. Didn't she just argue that police aren't protectors of capitalism then just state that the police is one of the three pillars of capitalism? Yes, she did. She doesn't realize that capitalism would collapse if that happened. Yes, if left to its own devices due to the inherent uh, internal contradictions within capitalism, within the class structure, capitalism would fall apart. Social democracy unironically extends capitalism and half of these motherfuckers can't even concede on that point. It's caused more suffering than capitalism has. Join our middle ground Patreon to watch this exclusive prompt. Women are more empowered in a communist society. Here's a <laughs> yeah. We attack. She also did kind of sneak in and said, "We attack Vietnam to combat capitalism." Yeah, Vietnam was doing. Uh, Vietnam was doing capitalism too good. So we had to interfere because we hate capitalism. Don't look up what Ho Chi Minh believed or who he wanted, well, who he aligned with. A really good book on this called Why Women Have Better You want, you want Bunny to go first? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was, was, was like, like, I'm like, as a man, <laughs> I'll be quick. There's a really good book by Christian Godsey, who is a woman, called Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism and Other Arguments for Economic Independence, where she she's very critical of the USSR and the former Soviet countries, but she says when women have economic independence, that equals true freedom. 
um, freedom to leave an abusive relationship, which under capitalism, a lot of women are forced to stay in those relationships because of financial dependence on their husband. Um, women are discriminated against in the free market system because they have babies. Women can get pregnant. So if you're a boss, who are you more likely to hire? A good worker who's a woman who might get pregnant for nine months and have to go on maternity leave? Or a man who's not going to get pregnant? It's just a, a natural biological advantage to men in, in the free market. So if you provide economic independence for women, if you, if you meet their, their needs, that in turn equals freedom. I read the same exact book. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, the idea that only the man be able to get all the funds, revenue for the family unit. The idea that it's a woman's job not only to work as well, but they also take care of the family at home. I can't think of a better example. Nuclear family was literally forced onto Americans. Like they had posters for it everywhere. Like, <laughs> like how's that? Wait, women were more empowered in a communist society. That's like objectively true. I didn't even pay attention to the prompt. Like, you don't even have to defend communism or socialism to, to recognize that, right? Like, what the fuck? International Women's Day is literally a, a, a communist invention. Even on the aesthetic front, the USSR made genuine improvements on, on uh, uh, like, educational opportunities for women. It's, like, despite, you know despite uh, some other failures due to central planning or central planning's uh, obvious failures at a time when, um, you know, I guess they didn't have the technology, the notion that, um, the notion that, that women were, not doing well uh, under socialist structures is silly. How's that freedom? So let's say the U.S. had one billion people. How would you do to limit population? This is a prime example, right? How would they do it? I don't think they'll do it any differently than one child policy. Like, l let's be realistic. If you gave the U.S. a million people, what are they going to do? They'd probably just let them starve. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but in yeah, China, but they're like, we got to ration <laughs> goods and make sure we feed everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Circumstances were slightly different. They had to make choices. Might not have been the best choices, but if given the same circumstance in the U.S., maybe they would have done something similar. Communism in China was truly communism in the beginning. So let's look at the beginning. Um, so my mom was really young during that time, but at least she saw what women were empowered to do. At the time, yes, they took all resources and pulled it together and divided it equally, but women were truly equal in the beginning of China and Cultural Revolution. Women had the same rights as men, they did the same jobs as men, because more labor the better, right? So everyone had the same roles, same jobs, um, and there was true equality until capitalism got, or socialism capitalism got introduced. Now in China, there's no equality. I truly think because more freedom, more trade. So in the beginning, when there was no corruption, it worked perfectly and everyone was equal. I think we have a tendency too to boil down, to disregard economic freedoms when we talk about freedoms, especially in the US, we break it all down to individual freedoms, what do you have the right to do? But in China, the retirement age for women right now is less than 60. Whereas in the US, it's been actually going up because economic conditions for working people have been getting worse. I mean, that is freedom, being able to retire and spend more time with your kids, less time slaving away, making your boss rich. That is true freedom. Eddie's a very good communicator. I I don't know about all of his takes, but he is he's very good at uh, I mean, they're all pretty good in different ways, but he's he's very good at communicating uh, solid socialist talking points. Women have equal rights in the United States. You are allowed to do the same thing. He hates you law. I don't give a fuck, but also I, I doubt it things that men do a lot of time what happens with um like inequality is not the actually market, it, right? no no it's not the market it's difference in preference um specifically with like if you're looking at like income inequality there are so many confounding variables that you have to look at when comparing income inequality where do you live what's the cost of living uh, what kind of job do you do what's the risk associated with your job logically markets and capitalism mm. is uh the best resource or you kind of prioritize the best right but if that's the case, women sure. could get pregnant, hence they have to take time off, hence they're But that inefficient. doesn't mean that they're not the best at something. Despite the fact that you can get pregnant, they can still be incredibly skilled over other people. But I think... Wow, you should, you should tell that to the bosses under capitalism then. Because it seems like, it seems to me like that's a big hang-up that they just can't overcome for some weird capitalist reason. Capitalist societies, because of that time you need to take away, it's a risk. There are, there, sure, there are disadvantages. It's like there are a biological disadvantages. Financial Nobody, risks. Is what yeah, right. Nobody's yeah. contesting risk. that there's a major biological disadvantage for women. Women can also. He said women have equal rights in the U.S. where you don't get, have paid maternity leave.
Has there been a be communistic country yeah. female <laughs> leader yet? Margaret Thatcher. New Zealand has one. Finland has one. Uh, is there a communist? Uh, Kim I'm Yo Jong's her name, right? In, yeah. in the DPRK. Yeah. She's one of the highest. Oh up God! In the, what? In the Wait, what country government. are you? you? Oh come on, bro! Don't do that. Jesus Christ! I just, oh Jesus! Dude, come on! He just said Margaret Thatcher. Just fucking eviscerate him. Like, there's all you need. Also. I mean, Mao's wife was pretty popping too. Ultimately, oh, this is so stupid. You look at you look at the averages, right? Uh, you look at you look at women in and their financial circumstances. You look at the development of women. It's not just like one person in a higher up position of power. Even though America also loses on that metric too. Like that, you know, many countries around the world that have worse rights for women overall have had female leadership at the top position before the United States of America. And yes, this also includes motherfucking Turkey dog. Okay. So like Amy Coney Barrett, Margaret Thatcher, women are real girl bosses in this country. Like, okay, well, Amy COVID Barrett literally fucking eviscerated a fundamental human right for uh, bodily autonomy for women. Does that necessarily mean that this means that the women are more empowered? Like, get the fuck out of here. It's so stupid. Oh, well, there's a woman in charge, so it's cool, I guess. America even failed on that front. But regardless, it's so stupid. Democratic People's Republic let's, of let's Korea. Let's not use North Korea. Would, the US is yeah, I wouldn't have used the DPRK as a, as a counter. Like, oh, that's another great question. Ask him if Obama being president means racism is over in America. That is not a metric. Of, of whether or not uh, a, a country has fucking defeated or empowered a certain subsect of society. So stupid. Amy Coney Barrett is a feminist icon. I learned it on Jubilee. Well, they did actually say Amy Coney Barrett is a feminist icon. Also, I am realizing that fucking Ty Lopez is really stupid. I mean, more stupid than I thought he was. And I thought he was real stupid. But like, God damn, he's even dumber than I previously thought. Had also had like very high people. The actual name of the answer. Yeah, like, yeah, like, okay, no. Secretary, the point is, there's go? never been. If we're gonna Wait, say communist, the, the prompt was, through communist economies, countries treat women better. So if you have no female leader ever, but you gotta look at averages though, right? No, but yeah. that's that's a bad average for you. No, it was not. What the fuck are you talking about, dummy? Oh my God, bro. He literally is like, no, no, no. You don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> Women in high places means misogyny is over. Like, again, Amy Coney Barrett destroys the conversation in its entirety. A woman elevated to one of the highest positions in American society literally participated in taking away a fundamental freedom of bodily autonomy from half the fucking country. It's ridiculous. Shut the fuck up. Go back to reading more books, dog. What books were you reading? Can I, just, can I have my disagreement? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's go. Because listen, I think it's a fair point in some ways, but also like as a woman, I don't want just to have like a tokenism kind of representation. Like that. Yeah, Hannah is literally, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I disagree with her a lot, but she's definitely smarter than Ty Lopez. If Hillary Clinton became president, it would be no better for me as a woman, right? Yeah. So I don't, that doesn't no, actually... Oh my gosh, she's literally doing my argument. Never mind. Okay, low bar for Ty, but holy fuck, he still cannot clear that. Advance me, but what does advance me are civil liberties. What do of advance course. me are having the ability to speak my mind, to pick which career I'm going to do, to decide if I want to have kids and if it's worth taking time away from the workforce, or if I don't want to do that. The ability to have those freedoms are here. And yes, there are many flaws and there are things that, that take away from them in our society. But as you mentioned, legally, women have had equality for decades and decades and decades. And now that we have seen that time period play out, women have been advancing leaps and bounds. They are graduating college at higher rates here than men. They are starting to out earn men when you look at apples to apples when they have the same job. For the record, like a lot of people in the chat are uh, asking like, how the fuck did Ty Lopez make any money whatsoever? Um, he can't even articulate his positions. And the answer to that is Ty Lopez is probably still smarter than, than the type of person who fucking gets caught up in his scams. You don't have to be like smart. I don't think to, to be able to scam motherfuckers, you know, 
Knowledge is how he did it. All right, same education. Continue. They're all pacing them in their advanced both in companies. Women and men need the same things, and that is freedom, autonomy, the government not getting in your way, <laughs> equality, civil liberties. Do you think economic stability is one of those things that I women do, and, and I men think crave we have, and need? But yeah. you would say capitalism is what gives Absolutely. economic stability. Or gives it Even better. though 80% gives it better. of women are living paycheck to paycheck, it's still better than Wait, but that's, 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 that's just true. relative that's poverty. One, so there's always going to be relative <laughs> poverty, even if everyone in your society... Wait, wait, wait. Do you know what relative poverty is? Is everyone, there's always going to be relative poverty in every society because relative poverty is just generally defined as making 40% less than the median income. There's always going to be a median income unless everyone's making exactly the same. So there's always going to be somebody living in relative poverty. But I want to address something you said earlier. That yeah, which is why relative poverty is, is certainly better in America than it is in like, again, I can't believe I'm doing this over and over again, but like a European social democracy. But it's not. Um, there is still certain metrics of stability, okay? There are still certain uh, uh, properties of, of economic freedom or true freedom, true liberty that you can point to that America fails uh, on dramatically. The idea that uh, America has better opportunities for women and women are more empowered in the United States of America is so fucking stupid we don't even have paid maternity leave mandated by the state. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Like, that is ridiculous. It's the only developed nation on the planet that doesn't have it. It's the only OECD nation on the planet that does not have that. That's ridiculous. It's over. Argument over. Done. Okay? Argument done. Argument over. Uh, guess what? No need, to, no need to talk about it any further. Okay? We're like picking and choosing like the U.S. isn't capitalist here, but it is here. No, it's like <clears throat> you judge a country if it's capitalist or not based on how it expresses capitalist traits. So we can say that like in general, the U.S. is a mixed economy that's pretty economically free, right? But we can identify things in the government that we don't like and we can say, okay, well, those things aren't really expressions of capitalism and we don't agree with them. Um, so let's Yeah, that's why you can always go against the grain in the United States of America and demand changes to happen on democratic lines and then the government's like oh yeah we'll definitely do that um which is why once again i can't especially because we're talking about women um for example abortion which is certainly very popular you know and and protecting that right is also very popular and yet for some reason on this wonderful uh free society we just had nine unelected appointed members with a conservative supermajority decide uh, on on uh, whether or not you can have said freedom. And they s lied to the American population and said they wouldn't do that. And then they changed it anyway. Time to game finish video tomorrow. Why is everybody coming in here to fucking uh, scream like little babies about gaming? What is going on? Shut the fuck up. I'm going to watch this video. I'm going to finish this video. I like watching this video. I'm going to finish this video. Please stop complaining. Let's just take three things. Let's take three things. Are women treated better? Do they thrive more under a communist country? I think it's not only symbolic, but it's also a reflection if you make a woman the leader. Only capitalistic countries. Oh, God, have had you're so stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stop. 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 Women so as the stupid. prime minister or the president, and there's lots of them right now. There's never been one in communist in history. America. Not even close. Okay. Number two. Sorry. Yeah, well, America's not the only capitalist country. Number, you have Finland, you have New Zealand, you had England, had Margaret, Margaret Thatcher. Keep going. Number two, I think it's a big deal that China massively disproportionately killed female babies. It's a big problem, and even they admit it. So when we say, here's the system that treats women better, come on now. The third, the third one that I think is important is where do women want to live? Well, definitely not here. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Well, where do they want to they want to live? Oh, dude. Yeah, dude. Women love <laughs> women love living here. Definitely. Everybody loves living here because everybody has the opportunity to fucking go somewhere else and they just simply choose not to. And not because this is all they fucking know. I hate this argument. Jesus Christ. dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> women don't want to live in North Korea. Checkmate. <laughs> Bunny from the video raided. So you say hi to her. Uh, hi, Toxic Bunny. Thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Um, I know she is the girl in the video chat. 
You do not have to be really weird anytime a woman is around us or on stream or we're watching a woman and you know that a woman exists in the world. You know what I mean? Just like stop embarrassing yourselves and embarrassing this community. Just be fucking normal. Okay? Thank you. Please. Live in North Korea? But North Korea is not a communism though. It's a, uh, which they, d- they just said, they, cor- they just change. corrected we're, me and said, it is communist. They're not really a communist country. North Korea is not a communist country. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. Juche is Marxism, Leninism combined with Korean nationalism. That's their idea. Before we get too far away from, to North It's not even, it's not even Marxist, Leninism. It's not, it's not, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Even if it was, I would literally lie and say it isn't. But it's not. It's not. But also, even if they literally were like, yo, we are Marxist Leninists, I would just straight up be like, no, it's not. Whatever. Cut it out. Just cut it out. You don't need to do that. You can talk about the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, popular Korea, best Korea, whatever the fuck you want to say on like normal terms about how uh, the dire economic circumstances that they are presented with is not a consequence of the despotic leadership structure or the authoritarian despotic leadership structure but instead a consequence of like global embargoes and not having any trade partners with the exception of china and sometimes russia like those are good talking points when when discussing uh, a country that was you know eviscerated by uh, an american bombing campaign what are what is not a good talking point is to look at north korea and be like they're fucking sick there are a socialist utopia. They do have bangers though, like Cholima on the wing. This is a great fucking. North Korea has foreskin. South Korea doesn't. Case closed. I love that. Participate within the government within America. Using America as example, rich white owning the males. constitution doesn't say. That. It's so funny because like the North Korea is great stuff. I first encountered this in my left book days, where, um, like. And this is like an old school thing. I don't even know if left book still exists. It's like Facebook leftist communities where I, I, I saw people just like posting constantly about how many burgers people eat in North Korea. And I was like, that's not like, what are you saying? <laughs> yes, that's how old I am. Okay. But it's just like funny to... <laughs> to constantly be like, no, dude, you don't understand. They eat so many burgers in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. You're stupid for arguing against me on this point. They eat burgers every day. They eat burgers all the time. They have like the, <laughs> they have the most, left book Andes will have the most like American brained fucking perspective on, on economic freedom and, and, and prosperity. They also use the burgle metric, which is the most American metric you can find. <laughs> at all democratically within the nation actually taking control rich white land owning males that was within the constitution the, the, no so, and not. i use that <laughs> it's not sorry it used to be let's it was go. it was illegal let's, for go, black people let's to vote, do yes. a legal uh, legal mandate women as well and i use that okay. as an example to show women did not have rights within this system at the, they fought for it okay aggressively with violence to make sure that they got their vote capitalism does not earn you your rights, especially if you're a marginalized group, because it's just not profitable. So the country is paying other people. The country, yeah. the country yeah. was this- Yeah, this argument is really stupid about, like, the women are more empowered in capitalism. I remember a left group I was in that had a hostile mod takeover, and the new mod said that you had to agree with Shining Path being the most recent advancement of communist praxis, or you were banned. That sounds exactly like left book established before like before like capitalist economic theory was established but, but, and capitalists would Cam, just argue Cam, that you're they the nicest, have... you look like the nicest guy in the world please let me finish this okay, one okay, please can please, please god damn it cam <laughs> god <laughs> damn it cam. you need a notepad no 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 yeah you need a notepad, yeah. Yeah. Notepad. Need a notepad. Oh, need the notepad. It's cheating yes. yep. i asked only the rich benefit from capitalism Uh uh-uh. uh. Theory states that the poor also benefited from it in the early stages. Uh, really? Nobody. Um, I assume that's what they'll only say. Only the rich benefit from capitalism. Uh, capitalism being 
the control of a state apparatus or a nation, government, state, whatever word you use, by a certain class. So if rich people are, those, are that class and they control that state apparatus, the government, that nation, of course they're the ones to benefit from it. Talk to the abyss. Looks like it, it seems like a TikTok. I mean, there's numerous ways of tackling this. You can say it's not only the rich that benefit from capitalism, it's the capital owners that benefit from capitalism. Of course, they are uh, usually rich. Um, but also, historically speaking, capitalism is was a necessary advancement. So, you know, it's not like industrial revolution, capitalism. These weren't poor or these weren't bad things that happened. At least if you, I mean, at least according to Marx, which I agree with as well. You it's more so that we do not necessarily need capitalism. Agree? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to explain why yeah. first before you go? Yeah, 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 so yeah, I'm yeah. a Marxist, so I believe that society, through class struggles, transitions through different epochs or different modes of production, different economic systems. Good so job, I Eddie. believe that the Civil War was a revolutionary war in America that transitioned us out of the slave-based mode of production in, in the antebellum South into capitalism. I believe that capitalism is a superior economic system to slavery. In Europe, I believe capitalism was, a, a, in many ways, a superior economic system to feudalism. But I would argue and, and agree that capitalism is better for everybody than, say, slavery. Like, you can still rise from the bottom with capitalism, and that's most societies. So it's like this possible for, you know, the less wealthy to climb to the top. If they have a good idea or, like, innovate on something that they think is a good uh, concept. We're talking about benefits, right? Uh, no, I, I see both your points. Um, definition. I oh, know. Now I'm being empathetical. I was telling you not to give you a definition. Now I'm about to give you a definition of capitalism. We should, we uh, should establish definitions of things we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? we gotta be on the same page about these <laughs> definitions. I, uh, I feel like we're I don't consider that slavery was a different mode of production than capitalism. No, I think. I mean, I think slavery still exists under capitalism now. So I guess technically you're not wrong. Um, capitalism also necessitates a permanent underclass. So. That could be slavery or it could be wage slavery. But having said that, um, I think uh, Eddie is doing like strict uh, historical materialism when he says that there is a difference between uh, chattel slavery in the antebellum South versus uh, industrial wage slavery. Slavery, do, slavery is not necessarily removed from capitalism, though, as obviously we have prison slavery still. It's a continuation of slavery in general. Prison labor isn't wage slavery. It's outright slavery. No, I, I know. That's what I'm saying. I agree. The American carceral state is a continuation of, of, of like, it's not identical. It's not, like, the same as shadow slavery, but the results sure reflect that. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean that, like, every black person automatically and their children are going to be slaves. But it sure seems to uh, even itself out on, on the percentages in the way that uh, it partners perfectly well with the war on poverty and the war on drugs. It is a more evolved version of... It is a more evolved version of slavery. And it does have straight up slavery. I agree with Eddie on most things, but I wouldn't conflate industrial capitalism with all of capitalism. The science and ideology just gets kind of messy. It's more, it's, I feel like it's just so much easier to do logical. Like, well, I mean, if you, points, if you cite like, a definition, I'll accept whatever you give me. I don't know about these guys. My, nah, this is a trap. Hold on, let me finish this. <laughs> <laughs> my idea of capitalism, um, I very much look at it within, again, very material, very cemented the idea of who has control over the military, judicial, the legislative arm of a nation or a state. For, for an episode about capitalist communists, we have not talked about class. Whatever class has control within that nation. And now capitalism would be the rich, the bourgeoisie, the, 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 the job creators having complete control within that society. Of course, that would only benefit rich people. Of course, you're going to get. Of course, you're going to push for tax cuts. Of course, you're never going to talk about livable wage. You'll talk about minimum wage. It's harm reduction. It's a tricky one. I'm not sure there's ever a time when wealth doesn't concentrate up, I... including Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot. It's all Castro. You don't think Castro was a rich man who was benefited from the 
Cuban system. And you have almost a billion dollars in yeah. the diet. But <laughs> I want to interject real fast because I'm like Cam, I won't just accept definitions. So when we talk about capitalism, that's fine, that's your definition. But for most people, when we say capitalism, what we mean is the free exchange and selling and buying of goods, right? And the more you have of that, the more freedom you have in those decisions, the less the government's involved in that, the more capitalism you have. And as we have seen capitalism expand across the world over the past 30, 40, 50 years, we have seen an 80% reduction in world poverty since 1990. Dude, I love that. Well, he said the same thing and you guys yelled at him. He said the same thing and y'all yelled at him when he said it. Fuck you mean? This is what really pisses me off about fucking neoliberals, okay? Like, she's literally doing the, the thing that I was memeing about earlier. China actually eviscerated global poverty, but also they did it in a capitalist way. <coughs> China, which is communist and bad, eviscerated global poverty, but that wasn't communist. That was good. And therefore, it must have been a capitalist way that they did that. India alone, it was cut in half between 1990 and 2010. That's miraculous. We have also seen a 40% reduction in child labor. We have seen the mortality rate for children cut in half. We've seen the maternal mortality rate fall by like 43%. We work fewer hours. And it blows my mind that somebody could say only the rich benefit from capitalism. What evidence do you have that that's done capitalism because these are as, not, as not China's poverty because we're alleviation measuring, programs are the Belt and Road Because we're initiative. measuring as capitalism has moved into various countries and we're looking at their poverty rates and their hunger rates, by the way, get cut as more and more socialist and communist I'm countries sure have fallen, which by the way, we're down to only five at this point because most people are turning against it. As that has happened, largely since 1993, we've seen- Bro, what do you mean? We literally are, are rolling back child labor protections in America. Am I, I'm losing my mind, dude. Also, you said you hate regulations. You said you hate regulations, and now you're talking about rolling back child labor? I mean, not rolling back, but but implementing what? Regulations to combat child labor? The fuck? What do you think that magically materializes out of nowhere? America is this incredibly wealthy, abundant nation, and we're rolling back child labor here. So clearly, it is a matter of regulations and not necessarily prosperity. And more countries become democracies, more countries implement capitalism, and yes, sometimes it's That's mixed, right. like China the U.S. Imp implemented or the, the Belt and Road in their, uh, in their poverty alleviation programs, though. So what That's evidence do you have what? that that's not having an effect? That's when they did what? Launch their poverty. I mean, this is not like, I mean, this predates, uh, this predates what he's talking about. He brought it up earlier. Poverty alleviation programs and the Belt and Road Initiative, which are, in, are, are intended to build up um, industrialization in countries who have been, been prevented from advancing their productive forces by imperialism, economic sanctions, and the U.S. dominated financial system that emerged after World War II. Where okay, the this IMF part is right about the Belt and Road Initiative. I just don't know why he's bringing specifically that up. A bank can basically decide whoever they want to give financing to. So, like when Chile went socialist under Salvador Allende, um, Richard Nixon famously said, make the economy scream. And the IMF and World Bank went from giving them $200 million in funding a year to two. Why do communist countries always have to depend on capitalist countries to succeed? Anytime they don't, it's because there was an embargo or they weren't giving them money. I don't hear us saying that. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, 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 wait. She is not about to bring North Korea up as a country that like, what, has embargoed America? I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. It's because the global structure that we exist under is global capitalism. That's where the money is. Why is that where the money is? Because that's where the colonial entities were historically. What the fuck? Why do they speak Spanish in Latin America, I wonder? Why do we speak English in the United States of America? Or English in Canada, I wonder? How did that fucking happen? Why does everybody speak English in general? Hmm. Like... This is why neoliberalism ultimately always reduces to incredibly damaging race realism, okay? Always. Why did those countries not develop? Why? Why did these countries not fucking develop in the global south? What happened? Is it because they were just like stupid? Is it because they're inferior genetically? Or is it because we prevented them from developing, which Eddie correctly pointed out? Because it is infinitely more favorable to the first world nations. It's infinitely more favorable to, historically, the global north that the global south never actually developed. And we kept them in this subjugated 
condition so we could extract their natural resources, which we still continue to do so through trade relationships and the World Bank and the IMF. And that is what uh, that is the economic dominance that we uh, uh, that we subject upon them. And then beyond that, we literally go and directly involve ourselves with boots on the ground, military warfare or coup d'etats that we fund and facilitate and pull off. The idea that those guys, uh, you know, why didn't they develop is, is the same question you can ask about black and brown people in America in comparison to white people in America. It's either a product of systemic racism, an external factor, right? Because if you ex if we admit that it's a systemic racism that is uh, that has subjugated black and brown people in this country, non-white people in this country, okay, then you have to admit that systemic racism exists, or it's an intrinsic factor, like uh, I don't know if you know this, but it's a racism, like uh, as in uh, race realism, like those guys are just racially inferior and could not develop in the same way that white people did. That's it. You can try to hide that beyond like culture and other words, but ultimately that's what it comes down to. That about North Korea. The Congo is capitalist. The Congo is one of the poorest countries in the world. The Congo, though, is mineral rich. So much cobalt. Every single one of your folds needs cobalt to work. That is your real life vibranium. Capitalism has not helped the Congo. The disorder within the country benefits the capitalists at home. And when that's you say the they're capitalists, what do you mean that the Congo is capitalist? Well, you better because watch your definition who, is if not you're my African. You know who the new colonizers are? China. Oh Who's my God! He's so stupid, Ty. You are so dumb, dog. Literally, oh my God, bro. That's awesome. He reflects how fucking stupid like the average American is too. He's so perfect. Wow, I can I can butt in here. You know who the real colonizers, the new colonizers are? China, bro. Fuck, dude. You fucking came up with a fucking awesome, awesome point, dude. Thank you. He is really dumber than I thought he was, and I thought he was really fucking dumb. That's sick. Yeah. These Africans, they don't know any better. Instead of getting the good IMF loans and continuing their trade relations with you know, the Western world, they're too stupid and went to the Chinese guys for more favorable loans they think are more favorable, but secretly they're not. Even though if I read a one foreign policy magazine article, I'd come to the conclusion that maybe they are more favorable, a conclusion that even American capitalists are coming to terms with now. Knowledge. Is that, is that, is that of that, Africa? Ty, oh. I love you. Terrible argument with me. Great with, Boy, great with the other type of guys. Just but because you say it's terrible but, doesn't mean it's terrible. To be clear, I, I'm not, I wouldn't accept your definition of capitalism, but I will obviously accept your definition of socialism. That's what I meant. Like, obviously, I know what I think capitalism Wait, what is. Oh, so like, my Faith 577, so thank you for the 10 gifties. Just so I know, or, why, or why is China, whatever. why do we think, are you making the stance that supposed altruistic slash centrally governed China? It's not altruism. It's not. It's not. I don't think China's uh, Belt and Road Initiative is, uh, is altruism. I think that China recognizes the benefits of, one, soft power, but also, two, uh, developing more countries so there are more markets that they can sell product to. I don't think it's, like, done out of the kindness of their hearts. That's it. You get more allies globally, and you get to develop them. They feel reliant on you. It's a long-term investment that is mutually beneficial and you get to open up new markets. That's it. You get to hawk more products. If you're building products, if you're selling products and, and uh, you need to even uh, refine faster, but you can't extract fast enough, that's what you do. China is not a new capitalistic empire. Moving into Dubai, you see it there. Moving into Africa, China is not America. There are clear differences in what that. America does in the Congo versus what China does. America comes in, they set up military bases. Unmarked airplanes will come into the Congo with multitudes of American military and multiple corporations. You know what China does? They come in with intellectuals, with a document signing. Would you guys like to do this trade deal? If you do this, we'll build a mining facility that the state can run and that will benefit your taxes. And you know what the Congo will say? They'll say no. And you know what China will do? They make a new deal. You know what happens when you say no to America? 
And how does that for five and, and the law. So China, so Again, and that has America. Nothing to do okay, Reed Lennon, that's it. Like, honestly, a lot of this would be solved if they just simply read Lennon. Actually, like, she keeps saying, what does imperialism have to do with capitalism? And imperialism is a necessity under capitalism. If you want to implement a global capitalist structure, it's basically the same principle behind the, the, the permanent underclass existing in, in domestic production. But it, it's, it's basically the same principles, but defined on a global scale. That's it. Capitalism necessitates imperialism, which, you know, some say, not me, is the highest state of capitalism. Very, very long <laughs> there is no perfect economic model. <laughs> There's no disagreer there. I mean, one of the sorry to start already. One of the main what they don't like capitalism. So if China's doing capitalism in Africa, isn't that good? Are they mad China's doing capitalism better? Oh yeah, that's the other part of the conversation that I forgot to address as well. It always comes down to like, you know, it's communism if I don't like it. And it's capitalism if I do like it. But if China is doing it and I like it because, like, they eviscerated global poverty, uh, extreme poverty at the global level, then that's capitalism. But if they're actually uh, giving better loans to African countries and and doing it under, like, let's say they're doing it in a similar capacity to the IMF or the World Bank, then they're doing communism and I don't like it because I don't like what China is doing in Africa. But we should do the same thing and and we should continue doing the same thing. Must be easy to win in any argument this way. Yeah. And misconceptions about communists is that we want to establish a utopian. One of the foundational communist texts is Friedrich Engels' Socialism, Utopian and Scientific, where he says, he criticizes these utopian socialists who are saying, overnight, we're going to create this perfect society. He says, it's not possible. You can only build a, a better society out of the one you currently have. So we have to take what we currently have as far as a socioeconomic structure and figure out how we can build something better out of that. But it's never going to be utopian. There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be corruption that needs to be combated. We just um, want to build a system that's more rational um, and based on fulfilling human needs and human flourishing rather than simply profit. So I think we would agree from capitalism side that there's no perfect system because there are scarcity of resources. And again, I think you are always up against human nature, which has a lot of corruption, which has a lot of selfishness, a lot of self-interest. Why I like capitalism is that I think it's a system <laughs> that acknowledges that and says, how do we restrain those impulses within people? How do we create a system where in order for you to get what you want, in order for you to get your needs met, or in order for you to get rich, you have to provide some kind of value for other people. And so that is what instigates productivity. That is why we see such large innovation gains. We've seen such big technological gains under capitalism. There's still going to be problems. I don't think there's any way to say we will never have people who are poor. We will never have corruption. But I think capitalism does the best job of taking what we're dealing with and trying to make it operate in a system where people are civil to one another. Yeah, I mean, the argument is like all the good things are capitalism. Capitalism is responsible for all the good things. Please do not look around at all the bad things that you see. Or if you do see those bad things, then that's socialism at play. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty funny to say this as like one of the major defenders of your ideological position here is literally a con man sitting right next to you and defending capitalism and not really doing a good job at it. But it is pretty funny to be like, no, this is the best structure as a matter of fact. Also, here's a guy that's sitting next to me that definitely does it well. It's, oh my God. Another, and there's natural cooperation within it. When people say, <clears throat> when people say a perfect economic system, it's like saying, what's the perfect science? Communism, Marxist, Marxist Leninism is a science. What is the most rational way to organize a society to make sure that it can actually see a future. And if you read the debates within the Chinese Communist Party, they are constantly going, Stalin did this, this was right, this was wrong. You know, Cuba did this, Tito's Yugoslavia did this, this was right, this was wrong. They're constantly learning and experimenting. Stalin did, wasn't open to too much we're, idea. But we're in 2023, Stalin's no, but let's dead. Talk about let's... The... He's like, they... <laughs> He's just, dude, I, okay, I take it back. Ty Lopez is awesome. He's so funny. He just, he's literally a talking points machine. Okay. He's like, eh, Stalin bad. Am I right? He'll just be like, <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. I, I have something to say. Venezuela.
Did anybody hear that? I said Venezuela. Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? Right? Fucking. Ah? Stalin was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so awesome. Wrong. You know, Cuba did this. Tito's Yugoslavia did this. This was right. This was wrong. They're constantly learning and experimenting. Stalin did, wasn't open to too much we're, idea. But we're, he, he, like, leans into the other guy. The other guy's like, dude, fuck away. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Even the other dude is like, come on, dog. Like, look at me. I am literally the, the, the quintessential unfuckable college Republican, okay? And even I am grossed out by your behavior so far. You have brought us down dramatically, okay? You have, you have single-handedly eviscerated half the, half the arguments that we were going to put forward. He leaned in. It's so good. 2023. No, but let's dead. talk about let's the modern countries, though, <laughs> because <laughs> within yep, the actual either. communist countries right now, you literally have people going swimming with sharks to escape them. You don't see that happening in capitalist countries, period. One, because you don't have to. We just let people leave. Yeah, people are people are swimming with sharks uh, sharks from China, which oh fuck I forgot we're talking about China as a positive now, so then it's not communist it's socialist, or I mean not socialist sorry it's it's capitalist. Also think about all of the think about all the socialist countries that uh, uh, <laughs> that people are escaping. Okay, you know socialist Mexico. Socialist Guatemala, uh, socialist El Salvador, uh, socialist, I mean, pretty much any fucking country that we're talking about. Socialist Haiti, okay? So many of these socialist countries have one thing in common. She's talking about Cuba, not China, but yeah. No, I know. I know she's talking about Cuba. But the hilarious part about this conversation is Cuba's failures are not born out of their their structure of governance their failures are a direct product of having incredibly limited trade partnerships due to the largest imperialist superpower stamped on top of their fucking asses right there it's like literally in their backyard forcing them to not be able to have normal relations with any other fucking country on the planet it's ridiculous so, as far as Cuba goes, when you look at the situation in Cuba and compare it to the other countries that America has kept in its orbit or its sphere of influence through direct intervention, Cuba's doing quite fair, quite well, as a matter of fact. Like, infini infinitely well. I mean, look no further than Haiti. That's it. It makes no sense to just try to point to Cuba... Okay, to try to point to Cuba as like a demonstrable failure while simultaneously being like, no one's trying to come to America from, no one is trying to fucking escape into socialist countries. It's like, first of all, dog, you literally, if I were to ask you, like, do you think any of these fucking Latin American countries that people are coming into America from, are they socialist? With the exception of Vuvuzela, right? Another country that also suspiciously doesn't have the best relations with the United States of America, by the way. How odd how that works. Obviously, there's more problems beyond that. But still, like, with the exception of Vuvuzela iPhone, okay, every other fucking country where people are coming from or immigrating from and, and trying to fucking make a, a better living in the United States of America are capitalist nations. And they're not necessarily permanently capitalist nations. They didn't fucking start off as that in, in some of them and have been kept that way through direct and indirect intervention. So the idea that like in a global capitalist system that capitalism has actually benefited all these fucking countries is ridiculous. You just have to do a lot of like, I'm closing my eyes and closing my ears and going la 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 la. I can't hear you to be able to not see the reality for so many countries of the global south that are capitalist that just never get mentioned when they want to so that's a big part of it but two it's because people know what's better for them and they are getting out of communist countries in droves when they can the two out of the five top countries that are trying to immigrate here right now are cuba and venezuela people are starving under these systems and so if you're a pragmatic person you have to look at communism's track record where it has killed millions of people it is the, oh. it is the leading cause of ideological death in the 20th oh 
Oh, 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 fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I know, I know. Um, so right. So right. 100 gorillion dead under global communism. So good. Oh, why won't you acknowledge that capitalism has zero deaths on the board? I know. It's fucked up. I never considered that. Fuck, dude. Communism is still killing millions and gorillions of people. It's really fucked up. Is really fucked up. One million, one hundred thousand gorillion dead at the top of the fucking hour. Who killed them? Communism. Not the fact that communism stopped you from being able to purchase a five dollar month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Okay, uh, here's the three-minute break now. So, communism, one hundred gorillion dead. We've talked about this quite a bit. It's like the classic black book meme. It factors in. Actual Nazis that were killed, which is odd. It factors in people that weren't born, people that could have potentially been born, including the potential uh, children of the Nazis, as a matter of fact. Um, It factors in deaths due to famine. And yeah, when you look at numbers like that, it's like, oh, wow, 100 million? That's crazy. Except if you make that same math equation for capitalism the global the the global economic form uh, mode of production all of a sudden take out the fucking communist countries you look at global capitalism now 14 million dying before we uh due to famine and famine related diseases before we even factor in deaths due to imperialism destabilization displacement and the like so Absolutely idiotic fucking argument to make, and yet it is made all the goddamn time. And it goes back to the same thing that I've mentioned a million times over, which is that if everyone is really stupid and that's what they know, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the fucking truth is. A century. And at some point you have to acknowledge that I care about people, I want what's best for them, but this isn't doing it. This isn't working. They also won't let you have a free press in any of these countries. They literally... So... As far as the free press thing goes, um, press liberties, not great anywhere. Definitely better in the Western world because they have the liberty to say whatever the fuck they want without uh, genuine concerns of destabilizing or genuine concerns of destabilization, okay? Um, The only country where I will push back on with respect to, like, free press and, and freedom of communication would probably be Cuba. That is the only place, like it's not as understandable in China as it is in Cuba. It doesn't matter how much America tries to destabilize these places and has been able to do so successfully. Cuba is the only place where it's understandable because it's in a permanent conflict. It's in permanent war with a significantly more powerful uh, nation that is in its backyard. America, when it went to war, or even when it didn't go to actual direct war, but during the Cold War, for example, engaged in fucking severe restrictions on free press itself. This is something that people always fail to consider when we talk about uh, freedom of press in the United States of America, okay? Just something to consider in general. Um, You know, the the Red Scare and, and even beyond that, like no free press during times of war, during World War II, for example, we did not have we did not have fucking free press during World War II, and it was understandable. Everybody fucking saw that, and we're like, okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, we're in war. Um, as far as uh, post World War II, we had the Cold War, which wasn't a direct hot war, and yet even then we did not have the same free press liberties that we enjoy now. We enjoy them now because, well, the United States won the Cold War, and the USSR is gone, so there isn't really. Uh, a, a significant threat to the established order of capitalism. And that's part of the reason why um, that's part of the reason why we can enjoy such liberties here. But even then there are severe restrictions. It's just a different kind of uh, a different way of controlling speech, not through directly controlling it. You could do without the smug demeanor when giving these lectures. Wait, what? What smug demeanor? So weird. Um, But anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying, free press is, is, uh, I mean, it press is certainly more free in America, even though it's controlled uh, by capital. 
and there are different boundaries and different mechanisms of control in Western liberal media. The elevation of non-dissenting voices that are neatly that are neatly packaged within the confines of permissible thought is what you see. It's not an accident that everyone, uh, every anchor on CNN and MSNBC and Fox News end up agreeing on American imperialism across the board, right? Or do you think that they just simply happen to agree on issues like that out of sheer luck? No, they don't. They don't elevate dissenting voices. Have a government-controlled press. My TikTok's so been it's banned so seven great. times after Mine's the U.S. Go- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no free yeah. press the here either. The U.S. not running TikTok. <laughs> it's still China. The, okay. No, it, no, yes. No, no, you're no. wrong. You're no, wrong. No, you're wrong. The you're U.S. Wrong. government wrong. forced yeah, TikTok to hand you're over government. American servers to a company in Texas called Oracle who proceeded to hire a bunch of U.S. State Department operatives and NATO operatives, and that's when we got banned. So okay. it's and that's not, why I can't talk about Google. It's no longer run by China. It's almost gone. It's almost gone. I'm just saying there's no freedom of press in the U.S. either. What there does, is freedom of the press. What does no, freedom not. mean in a country that imprisons the most people in the world? <laughs> yes. That's a great question. Super yep. opposed to what, it. It means that the government is, is too big. There's too many laws. How We've made- oh, my God. Yo, what? She's saying fucking abolish crime? What is happening? That abolish prisons. She said our prisons obsolete. We need to, we need to only lock up people who are violating the non-aggression principle, dog. We need to... We need to enforce contract law and contract law only. <laughs> oh, Jesus. She's funny. Make things that are nonviolent so that have nothing to communist. do with it. Listen, <laughs> if I'm a capitalist, I want what to protect big people's boy, person and cook? their property. That, those are the- she's an ANCAP. Law overruled. Law low. She's an ANCAP. Don't eat the bait. Don't do it. Only no, laws that should exist. If you're a capitalist, you protect the And if you, you violate those two things- no, Profits people's and personhood and Nobody's their property. Individual property. liberty is essential. Yeah, she said people's personhood and property. Dude, I'm sorry, but fucking ANCAPs are so unserious, dude. Like, how are you going to put property up there, dude? Oh, my God. <laughs> she said personhood and property, things I own, must be protected at all costs, no matter what, Okay. Under what are tax cuts? You pay everything that you're supposed to, and then they give you money back. So you have more so money they, if there's a tax cut, right? You have more money if you, you have, have more cut. of your money that they took who that has, comes back to you. Okay, so with those tax cuts that just happened, who has more of their money? What do you mean, who has more Come of their on, money? Man. No, I will spell it out for me. I got you. Which people gets to keep more of their money? I mean, the Trump tax cuts are literally next year about to perish. For everyone but the top 1% and the corporate tax rate. That's an interesting phenomena. How'd that happen? The only Trump era tax cuts from the Trump tax bill that was hastily put forward and pushed through, the only ones that are actually permanent and not slated to sunset are tax cuts for the top marginal tax rate. What's up with that? 2015. Or not 2015, 2025. Sorry. What's up with that? Who did that? How'd that happen? That's crazy. Who? Well, I presume it's It's the people making more money, obviously. (laughs) Who makes the most profit? If there's a tax rate and you make more money, you're obviously going to pay more money. And if you get a tax cut, you're going to get more back because you made more money. Are you referring to Trump only giving tax cuts for the rich or something like that? Is that what you're talking about? Well, as a socialist, I'm not really here to argue for taxes. I'm more to argue for (laughs) worker ownership of the means of production. But I think Bunny wanted to go. Yeah, I was going to ask. So I guess hypothetically in capitalism, you have free market, correct? Mm -hmm. So when free market occurs, it goes to near zero profit, correct? When a free market what? occurs, in a free zero market, profit? the equilibrium point is near zero profit because they'll keep undercutting each other until they maximize demand. Why would but they work or do anything? She's talking exactly, about the business. Exactly. She's I'm talking about, talking about classic like, economics. Like, yeah, classic business. economics. Right. Um, but let's say hypothetically, like Amazon is a prime example. They keep pricing, like I guess, like earning less and less profit. So wouldn't that create monopolies? And I mean, that's how you want to get more demand, right? But, okay, so first of all, like capitalists are going to be generally against like trust and monopolies. But all, like but at the same, but like, but like, also, it's just this natural phenomena that keeps happening. I don't know why. <laughs> it's weird. Even with all the regulation, there's some called regulatory capture, and it's just weird. I don't know how that keeps happening. I just don't know how. 
if monopolies are an inevitability in a sector, okay, because it is, then do we have, uh, should we, should we at least like control it at the behest of the entirety of the population? Or should we just let like one guy and, and the board of executives control it at the behest of shareholders, which are, I guess, you know, one to top 10% of the population? I don't know. Cause like, it kind of seems to me like this monopoly shit is an inevitability no matter what. I don't think you acknowledge how innovative mergers and acquisitions is true. I, I, it's very different. It's called vertical and horizontal integration, folks. Very different than how we monopolize. It's not, and oligopolies are also very different than monopolies, especially because there's no price fixing, but price leadership, which is not illegal and totally valid and much easier to do under corporate consolidation, which just seemingly happens, okay? Same Creates time, like how, how could, but how every could, time. no, yeah. it does not every time. Not, how, or oligopolies. Or oligopolies. Or how could, how could, economy, the how could a socialist argue? Yeah, exactly. It's oh, to men. oh, he did it. He did it. Look at his face after he said it. How, how could, economy, the how could a monopoly? socialist argue? Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't you say communism is the ultimate monopoly? Fucking cooked. Yeah, that's why I have talked about, as a joke, but also kind of seriously, allowing Amazon to own everything and then having the state take the military and militarily nationalize Amazon therefore achieving perfect communist utopia, okay? I call this Amazonian accelerationism, okay? That's what you're supposed to do. Let Amazon own everything. Bring in the military to take over Amazon and forcibly nationalize it. Step three, profit, question mark? That's, that's the way we do it. Mix the V-loan with the Rick. Thank you for the five get the subs. David Graeber literally said this to Novar said this on Novar to Aaron Bastani. Really? That's awesome that someone who is infinitely smarter than me also said the same thing that I have jokingly said for a very long time. Does this mean that we are ruled by beautiful Amazonian women? Yes. Exactly. It's rich to men when socialists or communists argue against monopolies or they use that as a hitting point against capitalists when like the biggest and most powerful monopoly that you could possibly have is a state a wait wait it is a state owned monopoly not. yes it is absolutely oh a state owned enterprise would not be a monopoly because the control in a state owned enterprise is still in the hands of the public versus a monopoly is controlled in a capitalist structure and therefore an inherently authoritarian structure of governance the decision-making process in a monopoly is, uh, is, is dished out at the tippy top by unaccountable individuals, okay? State ownership does not fucking mean monopoly in the same way that a capitalist monopoly operates. That's it. It's like literally looking at Marxist literature and going, a dictatorship? No, thank you a dictatorship of the proletariat versus a dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. The bourgeois class currently have a dictatorship. The goal of uh, Marxists is to change that to a dictatorship of the proletariat. That phase when you're so brainwashed that I hate any form of socialization that you fundamentally don't understand what public ownership is. Literally just ask this guy why he thinks democracy is superior to autocracy Lamel. Absolutely. And how are you going to break up monopolies no without the state? What apparatus is so going to come in and break up? And in a lot of these, yeah, yeah, can I, I make I, one point to it? In I'm all these socialist countries laws. like Nicaragua, they're now investing in small business and trying to encourage their civilians to, to start small businesses and to innovate because they view that as a better alternative than monopoly. And what apparatus do you use to stimulate small business but and break up monopolies besides the state? And when the state's monopoly, doing that, it's not United acting States as a monopoly. The ones the government creates. So what about maybe in the class struggle, you had, like you said, feudalism, slavery, 
capitalism, we tried communism. Maybe it's the rise of libertarianism. Let's be clear that slavery is part of capitalism. No, it's not. Slave, what is? Slaves were goods. No. Wait, that slave, is slave the government. So, so why that is they, the they, government they, Hannah, Hannah. more than anything intervening in the free exchange of buying and why, selling. Wait, wait, wait. Companies, wait, wait. Right? Why no, does slavery... Companies. Wait, you can't... The neoliberal chiming in and being like, slavery has nothing to do with capitalism is kind of silly. When, like, your utopian society literally... Or dystopian society literally features voluntary slave contracts okay which is a contract which should be enforced by the small minimal government that you want with a police force to enforce said contracts militarily if need be okay so you can't fucking be an anarcho-capitalist and be like slavery and capitalism don't match come on now that's crazy it's weird that you're saying such things it's like okay well what do you mean why not Predate capitalism by thousands of years. Yeah, if it's a part of capitalism, why does it predate it by thousands of years? No, that's actually a great point. I'd like to hear that answer. Let's move on that because it's a hot topic. It's too spicy. No, it's not too spicy. I actually want to wait. I want to respond because you wanted to make that point. You cannot say you do want to argue. You wanted to make your point, so let me make it back. And then you're going to try to say it's too spicy for me. No, I got you. Like, let me respond to you. It is not capitalism coming in and enshrining enslavement. It has been on the books in multiple kinds of countries, multiple economic systems throughout history. And in fact, capitalism is what got rid of it. This country is what turned the tide on that and started pushing back against the centuries old awful. Damn, that's crazy. America in the forefront of the abolition of slavery is a wild take. That's like, that's sick. I God, I love American exceptionalism so much. It's like, <laughs> first of all, we still have slavery. Like, it's it's literally a part of the Constitution. What the fuck? It's in the rule book. Slavery is fine as a fucking method of punishment is one of the rules. What do you mean? But even, even if you had the rose-tinted glasses of American exceptionalist history on the mind, we are not the first to abolish slavery. As a matter of fact, we're one of the last. I would Some would say we never abolished it at all, which is understandable because it's true. But, uh, you know, even from, like, the most, like, pro-American history book standard, uh, we did not. We were not the first. We were the last. Well, institutions. So to Eng say it's England capitalism, I think it's America. honestly offensive. That's ridiculous. Yeah, the purpose of an economy should be to maximize the well-being of the population. Hey, that was my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no disagree. What happens if no one disagrees? I knew we'd agree There's on this. There's no debate. When we were, I knew we were going to be debating capitalists, I figured none of you would defend monopoly capitalism. You'd be more pro-small business, more pro free enterprise and you know you look at our current american system and it's not like ideal you know you're not giving it two thumbs up so yeah i just think we we all agree that we're trying to find the best economic system to promote flourishing among society and the population the economic system has the responsibility of taking care of their systems that's common sense shouts out to thomas Paine. i mean yeah, yeah. seems pretty <laughs> it's kind of self-explanatory at this point the government should always or in general the society should strive to be better and to make lives better for everyone but I would say not the government. I think you need smaller. Government seems to mess everything up. It's it's still better better with you, Ty. Yeah, if I'm Ty Lopez, I want a smaller government too. It's like, guys, I want to do crypto scams. And these guys, have you heard of this thing called the Securities Exchange Commission? What's going on? Guys, guys, I don't like regulation. Have I told you what I do like? Knowledge. What I don't like? SEC. I didn't even know that that was a thing, but the government apparently now has decided, okay, these communists, the big government, have decided, I can't sell you fake cryptocurrencies any longer, and also, now I have to pay taxes on that? <laughs> ah! Uh, humans, if you talk about the flourishing, you can still see there's tribes that live more hunter gatherers. Small, I think smaller is better. What about a robot? What yeah, about but, an no, unbiased fam family's robot? Family's better. There's an anime <laughs> called Psychopaths. Yeah. Which, okay, you, okay you guys don't know? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So I think a centralized brain computer with mm -hmm. multiple, like, millions and millions of minds in it what? might be more efficient. So a bigger government might be more efficient. If we could actually pull it off like psychopaths, I think it would work. But who programs the big computer? Well, at some point, AI can think for itself.
But the I don't know if that would be right good. Now, we need to find out with AI development, though, because the way it starts to gather its information is by absorbing what's already out there. The so internet. they are already having so many issues Bruh. with AI oh. being sexist, being yes. racist, starting to have really toxic views. So I think that it's um, <laughs> it's a nice utopian dream, right? I get your point. But to me, I would never trust anybody or any piece of machinery to come in and run people. our lives. So and realistic. our goal right? is to get worker ownership of the means, means of production and worker control of production. So I actually agree with what you're saying. And one of my buddies, Christopher Halali, is a, is a communist farmer in Virginia, and he lives in a very similar community to you. And you know, he says the same thing. Workers should be able to make these decisions about when to harvest, you know, but mm -hmm. they can't do that if all the farmland and all the, the farming tools and tractors are and fertilizers owned by multinational corporations and big agribusiness. I would like to note that you said control rather than own. And I think that under a capitalist system, workers do control the means of production by using their money as indicators. What? Yo! Yeah, dude. Hey, chat. Don't you love controlling the means of your own production? How? Don't worry about that. It's just, but you do. Like, you feel like you do, right? Come on. Remember the pizza party you got last Friday? That's kind of like the same as being able to have a say in uh, the, the product that you are creating, at the, uh, you know, making your own hours, Figure out what to do with the surplus labor value that has been extracted from you in a democratically organized structure. It's kind of like the same, but not really. It's exactly the opposite of that. Think about that, though. A pizza party? Caters, right? Like the business owners produce things based on the demand that consumers or workers, or the same thing, have. Our dollars. Wait, what? He also conflated consumers and workers. Business owners produce what, motherfucker? What business owner is producing shit? No business owner produces anything unless they are also operating the business as a worker as well. But in that process, they're also, they're producing things because they are working, not because they are the boss, okay? God damn, dude. I thought this dude was smart. He had glasses on and shit. He's talking about fucking, you know, uh, UN indicators of human development. And I'm like, maybe he's like a little well-read and he goes... Dude, consumers vote with their dollars, sir. Have you seen this graph that shows the the <laughs> the widget factory workers? I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, he did also say, ironically, big dub for China. He eviscerated 2.7 million homeless people from the Chinese homeless population. So maybe he is a secret uh, pro-China simp. Or does it mean fucking shit? I'm Our sorry. dollar does mean something. It's an indicator for what things are valued at. But if a central decided, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, if the central decide, if the central the government just efficient, decides right? what it's worth, no, like they have no sure. indicator. Surpluses because price is just a signal of scarcity. It's what are they long term? Hey, there's like not as many things as this, so the price is going to go up. Or hey, we've got a surplus of this, so the price is going to come down. It's a signal to people, and it signals scarcity. If you remove that signal, that's why central. Which is why we. Always have to maintain scarcity, even though we have an abundance of food supply, for example. You know, it's basic stuff. Just really good. It's good stuff. It's a good process. Yeah. Centralized economies fail. <laughs> Diamonds are so abundant. No wonder they're so cheap. Yeah. A lot of these arguments hinges on the goodwill of capital owners, which doesn't exist, of course. Because why the fuck would they? They're going to they're operate on uh, rational self-interest. And, and therefore... Of course, the system is going to worsen over and over again until there's some level of government regulation that says enough is enough. We have to fucking put an end to this. On this point, why trust a corporation? Because profit? Look at the fishing industry. I mean, there is no... Because there's, there's no, no way of allocating calculation. resources. There's no economic calculation. Like, and, and then you have the situation where people have to go into the black market to get things that they need. It creates utter chaos versus under capitalism. You have this... Wait, what? You said you hate regulation, and then you said black market is utter chaos. Wait, what do you mean? You are literally contradicting your own points. Why is the black market utter chaos and not a perfect, represent, uh, perfect representation of capitalism, unrestricted capitalism in display? What the fuck? It's the most inconsistent shit I've ever seen. She also kind of described how, like, the Millet style Argentina is her perfect world. And yet she's also describing how the Millet style Argentina or even, you know, Argentina predating Millet is, is unironically bedlam because it is. 
Because, like, that's what she's describing. She's a black market goods. People uh, trying to purchase goods in the black market is bedlam, which is true. It's less, res- uh, it's, it's fucking less regulated. Okay, well, that's Argentina, baby. What are you talking about? It's free flow of goods based on the signals that are going out between merchants and purchasers. That's it's all very seamless. Uh, I would say that any capitalist would agree that the ability to just quit your job and suffer through the demeaning act of trying to find another one is not a great example I of freedom agree. within this country. Why? Yeah. I don't um, understand. It's very easy to quit your job and get another job. Like, it's not means. difficult. Why is it sure, demeaning? Sure, sure. The average person who decides to quit a menial job, mm-hmm. who has no access to education, to get them a higher paying job who has no who has who has no social connection no cultural connection no state apparatus helping them in real life just pure real life it's not as easy as turn off turn on this leads to another really great example of government intervention that really screws up you brought up education pretty much anyone in the united states can get into college no matter how terrible your grades were oh that's great what really is that true that's so crazy Bro, is that for real? Why does every capitalist ultimately go back to like, you can learn everything in the library for free, which by the way, ironically, you know, is government uh, sponsored sub uh, uh, and, and subsidized state resource. But like, wh- what do you mean? There's no fucking barriers to entry for uh, college education. Damn, that's crazy. There's so many people are just like, yeah, I could go to college right now. I just don't want to, you know, fuck it. Like, what about poor people? What the fuck that have to work? What about people that have to take care of their parents? Also, the fact that college education isn't free is also a, a gigantic fucking problem, uh, especially in comparison to every other developed and developing nation where it is actually not only free, but in certain instances, literally subsidized, as in the government pays you to go to college. It's so wild that these other capitalist social democracies have figured out that it's actually quite beneficial for society to be better educated because a better educated workforce means a more productive work po- workforce. Okay, it means more innovation. It's just better for growth, better for... Um, it makes society more sustainable, less susceptible to volatility, you know, all this stuff, except, you know, in America, you don't really need that. Great, that really leads me to my next point. It's cheaper in It it is very expensive, but do you know why people are able to go to college despite the fact that it's super expensive? Because the federal government comes in and says, hey, I've got two bags of money right here, and um, I'm willing to give it all to you even though I... Oh, shit. Damn, I didn't realize student loans are the reason why college education is so expensive. Okay, well, how about if the government intervention in that sort is bad? Okay, how about good government intervention where they just fucking implement price... uh, uh, price controls on college education. I know you can't pay it back. And then the colleges say, well, hey guys, you know, it seems when we keep raising our prices, the government just keeps yeah. paying it. Yep. And the kid, we don't even have to worry about if the kids are able to pay it back. We're just going to keep on paying it. The trend line for like college tuition prices and like government involvement in the education system, especially on the collegiate level, is like identical. What does government do well? We forgot to ask prop that. Prop up prop. capital and prop up big banks. But then you don't like government. Then we all agree we don't like government. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking own, dude. Great take. I went to shake your hand, you were facing the other way. Don't leave me hanging. Government spending has gone down. The majority of university income is tuition for the first time in U.S. history. Majority of university income is is in tuition for the first time in U.S. history. Can I show you Cam's profile pic real quick? No fucking way. That's not him, is it? Stop. Is Is he censored? Why are they censoring him? Man, that fucking video sucked. Holy shit. That was so bad.